All right, are we here? I believe we're here. We are here. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the second hashtag Black AF Roundtable. We are so, 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 so excited for you all to be here. Um, the last one was a lot more than people thought it was going to be, specifically me, because how, what, the, the, the turnout was a lot, and we really do appreciate everyone. Um, I will start, my name is Omega Jones, I'm also known as the Critical Bard. I'm a professional actor and vocalist in the Midwestern region. Um, I have worked with people like Critical Role during their jingle for Critter, Critter Hug. Um, I do a lot of stuff. I'm just trying to be a bard in this chaotic world. I'm going to have the rest of our cast introduce themselves as well, starting with Tanya DePaz. Hey, y'all. Uh, my name is Tanya DePaz, also known as Cypher Tear Everywhere. Uh, you may have seen me as Lise on Rob's Waterdeep and playing a mouse most recently on my own channel for a charity. And I do a lot of things. I consult, I do RPG development, and right now my big project is working on the RPG based on NK Jemison's fifth season. And I am angry on the internet often and early, but not without reason. Also, I've lived as a black person for 47 years on this planet, so I think I've earned a lot of that anger. Say that again. Ooh, excuse me. Mm, Christina! Hi. Um, my name is Christina Ariel. I am an Actor, tabletop RPGer, singer, master of all trades, and super mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm not. And I have been Ariza on Sirens of the Realms. I played Bear Posset on Critical Role Honey Heist and did one of the Handbooker Helpers, which was Baller. Shout out Jingle Guy. Um, I'm super like anxious right now because this week's been a lot. So um, I am blanking on the things that I would normally say, but hi. <laughs> Gabe. Hi, I'm Gabe, Gabe James Games, uh, pretty much on any social media. I'm a cosplayer, voice actor, game designer, and streamer, and I basically aspire to be Christina because she's amazing. Um, this, this week has been a lot, but I have, it's, it's a lot of ups and downs, and I'm glad because I'm, feeling like I'm both seen and heard more than I used to be and it has to stay but it's a start and I'll I'll take a start Brandon hey I'm uh Brandon Dixon uh aka Swordsfall the creator writer of Swordsfall it's a afropunk sci fantasy universe you may have heard of it before we're doing just about everything I've decided lately uh my mission is to do a little bit of everything you know we do art setting um i have like some of the best artists around they're doing amazing stuff we got like a little bit of music out we're doing merch do some shoes we're just gonna do everything with like black faces just everything you know so uh that's all i do so if you see the word swordsfall it's me if you don't know swordsfall you should google it i'm everywhere michael hi my name is michael sinclair the second i am a navy veteran I uh, am a D&D player, soon to be a professional D&D player in the works right now. Um, I play Besky on Forge Academy, which is a podcast. And I also play Gervain Schoberg on Cobalt Press's The Last Air with the Crafting Muse. Um, yeah, uh, I like most everyone here. I'm nervous and excited and a, a little bit angry, but uh, just excited to kind of talk with these folks and uh, be in this energy. And Honey! Hello everybody, I'm Honey, aka Honey and Dice. That's where you can find me on most social media. I'm a cybersecurity professional by day. I am a disability and medical challenge uh, advocate specifically for um, elderly individuals and children who have medical challenges and disabilities. I am the creator of the Embrace the Initiative workshop where I work to help um, build more comfortable and confident DMs, GMs, and storytellers um, at their table. Um, and I am as nervous as I was last week. Um, and so I feel so very blessed and honored to be with this group of amazing people um, for this 
very important conversation. So love you all. And thank you all for tuning in. Uh, so I wanted to start this week specifically. Well, I want to start and get some things out the way. And the first one is very simple. It's very blunt. And it's very real. We're going to be talking about some shit that people don't want to hear. We're going to be talking about some shit that people can't fathom. We're going to be talking about some shit that you won't believe because you've never experienced it. And that's okay. But most importantly, if you can't handle any of the shit that we are saying, the exit is to the left. I will wait. Oh, wait, is he, wait, me? Oh, wait, uh, oh, oh. Okay, now that that's done, um, I say that to say that we are not going to hold back. We are not going to sugarcoat. We're not going to put on a, a barrier for your feelings. This is stuff that's real and it's stuff that we experience as black people constantly. Not just because we're in the TTRPG D&D gaming community, but because we're black people. So... Again, if you cannot handle that, I will not fault you if you take that stage door and leave. But for those who do stay, hello. Thank you for listening and being a part of this community. We appreciate it more than you might know. Um, secondly, um, we are not going to be opening up for a uh, question and answer. This isn't a time for you to... Um, uh, we are not the textbook that you can now figure out, go into the side and get that little questionnaire and try to start getting more information. Just listen to what we're saying. Um, we're not going to, we will explain it how we explain it. We're not going to, um, I guess I'm just saying don't ask no questions. <laughs> if you want to ask questions to your fellow friends in here, that's fine. But we're not going to be looking at them and answering them. We're just here consider it like this you just got up you got some cinnamon toast crunch you went to your tv you got the remote and you turned it on and you see us you wouldn't ask the tv questions so don't do it here um uh and then uh i mean that's all i really needed to get out of the way from the jump i just wanted to make sure that was all clear um we are going to start off though by talking about how we um one second, how we have been doing the past week since the last um, round table. So if anybody wants to start that off, great. I I'll think that go. would be Christina. Can you hear me? Is everything copacetic? Hi, the last week has been an emotional shit show. I have been burdened down with not only my feelings of grief and overwhelming shock at the fact that it takes people getting killed and for us laying ourselves bare for people to care and to hear us. So that's been real. And there's this line in the book why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. And she says, you think you're coming into this conversation, like a white person, a black person in this conversation, now that you're newly woke and want to ask questions, you think that we're coming into this as a conversation and it's equals when you were coming in with conjecture and opinion and i am speaking from my lived experience you were talking to me about something that you don't know and you were trying to over talk me and overpower me to get me to come to your side that makes you feel better you will police my tone i have had i don't have to modify my tone for you for you to take me seriously it does not negate my message it does not lessen the point that i am trying to make so for you to do so is to dismiss me and try to just de derail a conversation that is very real because it's hitting something in you that is making you feel guilty and as my grandmother would say a hit dog will holler that's time for you to be introspective and to take those things in not to come at me and try to make me feel your guilt and the number of people that have called as there was a situation with something I'm involved in and someone called me and in the first couple minutes I'm sorry for what you've been going through this last week this has to be hard I can't imagine what it's like to be a black person in America here's how I feel and talked for 45 minutes about his oppression as a white male in America and I am not with the shits right now my dude like 
I understand you have your feelings. I do too. 34 years worth of feelings that I have not been able to talk about because they make other people uncomfortable. We have been setting ourselves on fire to keep you warm for the longest time. And now you expect us to moderate our tone to make you feel better because you just figured out there was a fucking problem. So yeah, that's how I am. Uh, to follow up with Christina, I've had, it's been weird because the stream last week followed on the heels of the big charity stream. And I've had every white person that ain't talked to me in months or a year messaging me and texting or whatever way that they want to try to be in touch and go, are you okay? And it's like, I, I'm, I'm black in America. I haven't been okay since day one. So why this sudden concern? And, it's in, and it isn't even because of the stream. It's like the whole, as, as things ramped up. I mean, I live in Chicago. We had a curfew. They kept raising bridges so people couldn't go downtown. The CTA complied with the police and made it so if you work somewhere, if you were if you're essential and didn't have a car, you couldn't get in and out of downtown Chicago. So all those people that we're calling heroes were stuck at their jobs till 6 a.m. the next day. And it's also just been a lot of the rando internet racist that decides that, you know, a black person speaking is just too much for them and you know, I'm going to try to put you in your place. There's nothing a rando on the internet can say to me is going to make me shut up. In fact, that's just going to make me be louder and more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and like Christina, I've had the whole, oh my God, this is so hard. I can't imagine how you feel. That should be your, that you should stop. If you want to start your conversation with, I can't imagine how hard it is for you. Stop yourself there and think about the fact that you, as a non-black POC, a white person, are telling me, an actual black person, I'm white, I'm still black, you don't know how hard it is, then maybe you should stop. And um, and I'm gonna be that petty person there. We've also had a lot of, for those of us that are in the industry and, and doing other stuff, there's a lot of, let me slide in your DMs. Oh, hey, can you come on my podcast? Hey, can you, are you interested in a deal? And it's like, I've been here. I've been streaming for six years been doing RPGs for two years. Mm -hmm. I write, I do all this other stuff. And, and or it's the black people Pokemon. I got people tagging me in for shit that, who are you? Why are you, why are you giving out my time? I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. And there's a lot of, I know you're busy. I know your DMs are, are, are bad. I just want to check on you. If you know this, don't add to it. Mm -hmm. There's like a list of maybe five white people that I want to hear from. They're probably all in this chat right now. Mm -hmm. um, look, it ain't a lie. But, and it's like, oh, well, you just, I'm just trying to check on you, show I care. The time to show you cared was not at the time of, of world changing riots and protests. The time to show that you cared about my well being as a black person has been since you've known me. And we are not here to make you feel better, to hold your hand, because uh, in my discourse, someone made the, made a nice graphic of, let me remind you, Google is still free. That is going to be my answer to everybody when they still message me and they still DM me and go, but, but how can I help? I have just listed 20 bail funds that you could donate to. There's links to Black Lives Matter, et cetera. And at this point, we are, we are tired. We're tired. We're angry. And the last thing I'll say, because I know I'll run off of the mouth once I get going and I'm mad. Um, and I, I can't remember the woman's name. I know it's Kimberly. She had a seven minute video where she talked about y'all aren't met. You aren't worried about your stores and everything else. You're worried we're going to treat you and we're going to want revenge. And she had a really good analogy about Monopoly. Playing 400 turns of Monopoly with literally nothing. And then for the next 50 turns, everything you accumulate gets burned down. So I'll share the video on Twitter once we're done, but that is what it's like been being a black person in this country because there's always pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Nobody wants to try, y'all are lazy, yada, yada, yada. We've never had a chance. We've always been at the back of the starting line and sometimes not in the stadium. So everybody that wants to talk about, oh, black folks this and you don't try and you don't care. I have a college degree, I've got a STEM degree. So it's not that I'm not educated and I don't care, it's that the system is stacked against all of us from day zero. And I'm just tired, I'm tired of a whole lot of people right now. 
and people are now getting their feelings hurt in DMs. Ain't crazy when you don't work for free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit. Well, for me, it's been a little bit different. Like, but I think it's because, especially in social media, I kind of came into the scene differently because I only have one mode, and that's kind of just me all the time. And I think the funny thing is, like, especially at the beginning of the year, like last year, a lot of people, I think, pegged me as like, quote unquote, angry black guy who made cool stuff. So it was OK. Mm. And then all this stuff has been going on. And I've been so like after this last stream, like I gained like 2000 people and I'm like, where did y'all come from? And, you know, I actually pay attention to my Twitter, right, because it's it's my tool. And it was funny seeing some names that I was like, oh, oh, you're back, I see. Oh, you're back, I see. Mm, and you, and you, okay. So for me, lately, it's been a lot of, are you listening because you get it, or are you listening because it's fashionable? And for me, it's always an issue because people are always about it, like when things go down, but then when things simmer down a week, two, a month later, then all of a sudden it's, it's uh, now talking about that same issue, Black Lives Matter. Now they're like, but that was like six months ago. Can we just do this and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, this is an everyday problem. So we haven't actually progressed since the last time we just marched. So why are we going to start stop talking? And that's my worry right now is like, I see people really being about the energy, being about the anger, you know? But then when it comes down to being like, okay, what are you willing to give up? Then that's when everyone pauses. They're like, wait, what? We have, to, we have to give up something? I thought we were just going to march and say Black Lives Matter and everything was going to be great and mm. and move on down the street. But it's like, no, man, like when something's systematic, you can't just wallpaper it over. Sometimes you got to bust the whole wall down. Maybe we got to bust the whole house down, like down to the foundation and rebuild a new house. That might mean you're going to have to move out for a little bit, be in a hotel. That's That's what progress demands. And my issue is every time we get to that point, then people walk. People want to come and they want to come listen. And that's great. But it's like none of us are really saying anything new, new, right? We're just like saying the same things that like our parents and other like older people have said to us. We're just saying it to a new generation who didn't hear those previous words, right? So now we have like on top of having to fight systematic racism, now we have like this systematic trauma <laughs> because we can sit down with as many generations of Black people as you can find in your family and have the same fucking story to share. And I, I'm not interested in people who just want to ride and who just want to follow just because it's the moment, man. Like I want, when I say like ride or die, I don't mean like we're going to ride or die over something stupid. I mean like ride or die because like systematic stuff has to go. So like, how far are you willing to go? You know, and it just feels like everybody's like, well, you know, we we marched, right? We did a, we did a good thing, cookies. And it's like, ah, no has anything changed yet like so for me it's been a lot of just waiting letting people crawl in my inbox and be like hey i'm on your side hey i get it now and i'm like cool we'll see what happens in six months when there's nothing like relevant on the news to get you your 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 moral fibers all all in a wrinkle like we'll see what happens like when it's time for you to cause example right what happens like let's say we get trump out we get biden in and biden as we know has been like ah defund what happens if he's like ah, i mean the system's cool as is, guys. We'll just tweak this. Like, what are you going to do then? Mm -hmm. Are you going to go out and write when it's someone you kind of like doing shit you don't like? That's that. That's the line everyone comes down to. Like, So for me, it's just been a lot of, I feel like it's the same thing I've seen before and the same thing I've heard from my parents, <laughs> same thing I've read in class and books. So I'm just kind of waiting till like we break out of Groundhog Day and like then I'm ready. But until then, I'm just kind of like, chill in a weird way i don't mean to sound like apathetic but i'm kind of like haven't we seen this picture before like i'm gonna rewind to the part where uh it's no longer fashionable to say it and then let's see what's up i i feel that on a molecular level because what i'm waiting for is uh, a month from now how many black lives matter um words are going to be out of people's uh, usernames or how many people are going to ignore the fist or anything of that nature how many things that are performative are going to actually finally be done when is the curtain going to close mm -hmm. and I don't know and I don't care to know because that's the norm it happens we see it the next month it's gone 
So it's it's like it's that cycle. It's a circle of life, apparently. <laughs> but it's a circle Let's of black that. life. <laughs> I thought everybody loved the Game of Thrones. I thought they wanted to break the wheel. Aren't they all still mad about Daenerys? If you're still mad about that, then go out and start breaking some damn wheels if you're so mad about it. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, get a little frustrated. Like, <laughs> I was just thinking about how mad people were about the end of Game of Thrones. And I just remember thinking, like, can I just borrow some of the energy for, you know, just any time there's something real that matters? Mm-hmm. No? Okay. W- what if we were just like, hey, if you vote out Trump, they'll redo the last season of Game of Thrones. Did you hear? What? Yeah. It's true. Pass it on. Share it around. Like, let's get that conspiracy theory going on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, just to speak on a couple of points that people were making, uh, y'all, you said, uh, Brandon, that Twitter was, is your tool. It's like, it's our tool and, you know, we having to approach our Twitters and getting DMs, getting people, uh, responding on our stuff and responding back that, you know, you ask how I'm feeling, like I'm overwhelmed through most portions of the day lately and having to deal with that and feel tired all the time on top of exam week for me like i'm just speaking to my own you know um experience so that's been tiring (laughs) um and and trying to like capitalize on what's happening right now um and worried what you folks were saying that you know when this is when, when people are like all right we're good now like we marched whatever whatever we're done um like okay um what do i what do i do now and and are people still going to be you know responsive that's it's really worrying um and something that you know brand you brought up was like even if we get biden in the office the thing that i'm scared about is like he's in office people get to do the thing that they have been doing except they have the veil of biden being there and so sometimes it can get worse because that's veiled now like you don't see what's happening because it looks better Right. So that's something that I personally worry about. Um, and yeah, just me going to bed every night, like completely exhausted uh, and like, OK, you know, round two or round three is tomorrow. Um, how do I how do I navigate through this day? Um, honey, many feelings. So many feelings. Um, the last week has been overwhelming because I'm used to being someone who uh, organizes the potluck, gets everything for the potluck, gets it set up, makes sure I ask everyone about their food allergies, and then sits over in the corner and makes sure that everything is running smoothly before I get my own plate. So I use that as an analogy that I'm not used to so much visibility Mm -hmm. because then I worry about not just myself, but everyone who is now following me, who is exposed to everyone else following me. And with every follow, you don't actually know if it's a friend or foe. Um, I have a very specific brand that I, I stick to and I was telling someone the other day that there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of insecurity going around right now. And I believe when you are part of a marginalized community, when you see others who are marginalized also in pain, they're supporting you, you support them, and you have a community that grows. I don't believe in trading an ist for an ist. And you see people who make, okay, this person is racist, so I can be ableist because I'm mad and I'm hurt. This person was ableist, so I'm going to throw out um, a careless homophobic slur um, because I'm angry and I'm hurt. And I know that hurt people hurt people. But if it's just a constant cycle of hurt, there's no healing. So that's where my worry and my concern and my anxiety comes from. As more visibility is given to 
people's pain, suffering, and challenges, and people who are caring want to defend them or speak up for them or say that's not right because I just learned something. I listened to a panel or I've been following someone and I know that this is not a right thing. I'm going to fight for them. But the weapons that they choose just go ahead and hurt another community that is struggling as well. So it's, I'm in a very strange place with it because I care, but more about what's happening to other people than what is happening to me, if that makes sense. Um, and for me, uh, wait, Gabe, did you go? I feel like you no. went. No, you didn't go. Go. No. <laughs> um, it's, there's been more good, which I'm really thankful for. Um, the stuff that I've been working on is getting more visibility and I'm thankful for that. I, I appreciate the opportunities I'm being given. And I also want people to be aware that when I'm being given opportunities, if, the connection that we have or the work with that we do or the communication, it doesn't stay. I will appreciate it, but if it does not stay, I will remember it. Um, but most of my, most of my social media is trying to be happier because it helps me if I can, if I can try to do more of it, it'll help me, but it's, it's not every day a good day. I had to go out, um, I had to go out to work a few days ago and yesterday I got my new driver's license, but I had like the paper because I needed to get a new license from uh, the DMV essentially. And as I'm like getting off the highway, there's a cop car behind me. And my literal first thought is, well, I don't have a physical license. It's the paper. What if they tear it? Is everything within view? Mm -hmm. um, do, I, do I have space to pull over? Uh, should I call someone so I have someone on the phone so I'm not on the phone alone? Um, is this someone that maybe is having a bad day and is mad at people that are protesting this stuff? And like, it, they weren't even, they, they were literally just getting off the exit and going somewhere else. But like, the fear doesn't stop because I had to like pull over to the side of the road because I was having literally a panic attack because I was like just terrified just from the presence. And it doesn't stop. I, I, like, I was like, let me make sure I have everything that I need within view in my hand while I'm holding the steering wheel so I don't have to move. And I was like, let me also like have my father who was a lawyer like on the phone, like prepared to hit the call button if I'm pulled over for whatever reason so that I don't have to have, I don't have to like use my phone. It's already on, it's on speaker, person else like they can hear, um, making sure that there's no loose clothing that it looks like anything could be hidden underneath. It was horrifying and like i'm fundamentally better now but not necessarily okay because like if that should not be something that happens and that was an automatic response like that was i should not have to have a survival response while i'm in my car going to work mm-hmm I base my routes on where I go based on like where I know cop activity usually is because no need to fuck with it. If I know that there's like cops around back roads, I'm gonna drive back roads that day, you know what I mean? So yeah. sometimes it's part of that. Like you think about it, it's like part of your general safety, like a safety <laughs> tip, like buckle up. I wanted to say something about that, Brandon. I, I tweeted this maybe six to eight months ago, but I was like, I was just frustrated. like you know driving around in washington state and um i was just thinking to myself like you know i only drive like you know so traffic usually moves almost anywhere you are going like 10 to 15 miles above the speed limit no matter where you're going most of the time that's where people hang out by people i mean mostly well okay so people are doing that but for me i go five to seven and i'm aware that's still a huge risk but i never go above 10 because it's like 10 is death to me in my head like i literally think over 10 is death i've got pulled over at 13 miles an hour i'm just like crap like and luckily it was a positive exchange and like i did everything that you're supposed to hands on wheel you know i'm reaching for my glove compartment because that's where my registration is <laughs> um but 
that someone tweeted back to me that that week they're like holy crap i didn't realize that like me being over to drive over 10 comfortably is a privilege that i have and i was like yeah like it's so frustrating like sometimes i want to go 10 to 15 over because i need to get someplace but it's like 10 is death like i can't go over 10 and that's something like that frustrates me because you'll have traffic going by you and and people white people are angry that you're going so slow but they don't realize like i this is my reality my reality See, you're, is you're i cannot than speed me. i don't do more than four how do you i don't do more than four above the speed limit people give me shit all the time because they're like oh, i drive like a grandma and i'm like well i got stories i could tell you so four plus that's most i do i couldn't even imagine it but like anything above like five I'll get palpitations like I can feel it. I'm like, how fast are you going? No, let me just, do you remember what the speed limit is? I mm-hmm. just go 55 just mm-hmm. to make sure, mm-hmm. just to make sure because it ain't worth it. No, but, I, you know, I grew up in the Midwest in the South. So that ain't a game you, you want to play. I, I feel that completely. It's like, and I'm not saying it's a non-black versus black thing, but as a black person, it's like once I know that I'm going over five of the speed limit, I automatically get anxiety. I automatically feel like somebody's watching me because my best friend said something to me and it was creepy. And the reason it was creepy because ever since she said it, it's come true. She always said, where there's one cop, there's another. (laughs) And I was like, you're lying. That's not true. And seriously, every single time I got on the highway or anywhere, but most of the time on the highway and I saw that one cop, it's like, let me just look around real quick. And there was another one. And I'm like, you, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't try it. Because then you're going to be the one who gets hit. And again, being a black person, me getting pulled over isn't just me getting pulled over and getting my license and registration asked for. Me getting pulled over is them looking at my record. If they give, if they have any inkling that I could be a thug or anything, Mm -hmm. I'm getting pulled out of that car. They want to search some stuff. They want to try to get me in handcuffs. They have all the reason to do what they need to do just because I'm black. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't even give it the chance. I refuse to give it the chance. Luckily, right now, I don't have a car. I don't need one. I can use the Metro in St. Louis. But when I did, it's like, mm, mm mm-mm. Mm -mm. And then when Mm -hmm. I'm in a car with a white person who happens to be driving and they're just going like Speedy Gonzalez and I'm like, sir, you need to calm down. And they're like, we're fine. And I'm like, no, you're not because I'm in the car. I had a cop car do a UE on one of those like country highways where you like, there's no real divider. It's just like kind of like submittal way. I had a cop do a UE through the median, through the gulch to come get me because I was going six over. Did a UE like straight up smoke like i see all this dust behind me and i'm like oh does someone have an accident and then here comes the lights and i'm just like that was the cop i just saw coming whoa oh cool so yeah four that's it i i if i was to pull my insurance with like the exception of the last few years because i've been a hermit i don't go anywhere i got pulled over on average once a year every year since i was 16. Yeah, I was in uh, I was in Seattle. Get a friend's uh, partner was giving me a ride back to the airport. Did you know, Seattle's like the Earth away from the airport, no matter where you live. And uh, we got pulled over, and I'm sitting there like I'm holding a dog because the dog was like one of those little nervous dogs. So it's like, please hold the dog so he doesn't jump out the window like, into the highway. And keep in mind, he's white. He's got his friends. They're gonna go do stuff after they drop me off. And weed is legal in Seattle. I don't care that it's legal. All my brain was, I'm a black chick in this car. They're going to find some weed and say, I sold it to them. And I don't live here. I'm not trying to be a statistic in liberal Seattle. And I say that incredibly sarcastically. (laughs) For all my friends that are like, you should move to Seattle. And I was like, (laughs) my black ass is staying in Chicago. and, it's, and then later, like, and it turned out his, like, registration had expired, like, three or four days before. And my brain is just going in circles, like, had that been me, let's say I had been driving for whatever reason, or if it was worse than an expired tag, they would have had my ass out on the median. I don't, again, I don't live here. They wouldn't care that I had a flight to catch. And I was shaking by the time this cop left, because he, like, for whatever reason, I'm not in the driver's seat. Police officer decided to have me open the window 
and lean in on my side of the car. I'm like, I'm not driving. What the fuck are you doing? And when we finally get to leave, he's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not fucking okay. I thought that cop was going to shoot me. And he's like, why would they shoot you? I'm like, Brown, we're, we're in a car. I don't know if you've got weed on you, but you were smoking. They could have smelled it on you and thought it was me. Any number of things that could have gone wrong. And people were like, oh, well, you know, it. They, you were fine with them. And I was like, that doesn't matter because they would have gone to jail. I would have been dead. I live in Chicago, one of the most corrupt fucking places for cops. And I can't, I can't, um, I, it's hard because I'm getting, I'm getting super angry because I hate our current mayor and I've hated most of our governors. Um, but people always want to go, oh, the police and officer friendly. I grew up in the era of officer friendly. Right now, if somebody tried to break in this apartment right now while we're doing the show, you know what? I would rather fight them myself than call the police. Because there's no way that if somebody broke in this apartment, they would think I probably live here. Because I've been told, I've been escorted home and asked what, where I really live. Not where do you live, where do you really live? In, in my middle class neighborhood in Chicago. And I'm like, would, would you like to come in? I can give you some coffee, I can show you my ID. Would you like to see my lease? Do we now need to carry fucking freedom papers just to walk down the street? Mm-hmm. So freedom papers. Look, mm-hmm. and, and like, cause you, I show them my license. That doesn't mean they're gonna believe me. Nope. So, <laughs> and you know, all the people are like, "Oh, not my country." I can't believe this happens. It does. One look at the White House should tell you that this still happens. And the fact, and to bring it back to RPGs. All of us have gone to conventions. All of us have been at Gen Con and everything else. You can count the number of brown and black folks, usually on one hand, maybe two in the last few years. And, you know, we all got the nod. We all clustered together. We were like, oh, you don't want to talk to anyone else. I'm like, no, no, I want to be safe. Can we talk about that real quick? The thing that people don't realize, like the utter epic levels of anxiety of walking somewhere like PAX and Gen Con and being literally the black dot in a sea a sea of white like i like people get anxiety around crowds it's like i get that but i don't it, that's a special level i remember let me speak out, to that I remember, well, I remember seeking out brandon and tanya at pax because i was like i know y'all are here and i don't know anybody else right now <laughs> in <laughs> texas when i went to her uh pax south or whatever it was and I've got to my hotel, mind you, like, I'm traveling by myself. I, like, it was my first time out of the house since, like, the baby. I get to my hotel, and there are three trucks parked on the, on the sidewalk of my hotel, like, across from the convention center. There's these big raised up trucks, which I'm from Georgia. I'm used to seeing big trucks, and I'm used to generally seeing who drives big trucks with jacked up wheels to compensate. So I look on the back window and they have their trucks parked right up by the entrance of the hotel. And they've got these big ass like Confederate flag Trump stickers on the back. And it was the way that they were parked. So it was like, like it felt like a threat. Like even if it was not intended in that way, the impact of it was very Like, why are these cars, when it's an underground parking garage, like, why are these two trucks here parked back with this Mm -hmm. kind of, I called my sister every time I got an Uber, I took a screenshot of it, sent it to my sister, said, this is where I am, I am in fucking Texas, like, understand how that feels. The very first day when I was at PAX, I walked outside of my hotel to go walk across the street to the convention center, and a lady was like, you know, I didn't see my first black person until I was 16 years old. Like, how do you, like, can I touch your hair? How did it get like that? Like, I just need to know, like, oh, like, how long did that take you? Oh, can I touch your skin? Mm-hmm. Like, these are things that people feel comfortable saying, not just in Texas, but at conventions everywhere. Yep. I was at a convention dressed as Gwen, as my, like, anti gwenum and someone walked up. I was like, oh my gosh, you did this with a fro? And grabs a handful of my hair that is attached to my scalp that I don't know where your hands have been. Mm-hmm. Like, 
you are treated I don't think people realize how much they fetishize you in a conversation mm -hmm. because they're so mm -hmm. not used to talking to black people. Mm -hmm. like you can tell people mm -hmm. who, so you're a uh, um, Obama. It's like, like a bucket list. They, <laughs> I've always Things wanted to, to talk to a black, black person about this. This is something I've always really, really wanted to talk about, but I've just like, and now, oh gosh, now that floodgate of, these are my questions that I'd like to pick apart about who you are, but well, I do want to touch exactly sorry i'm never i want to touch on the police situation i was leaving the D, D art show last year i was pregnant and i was going about six over i got pulled over by the little ampm going to my house i just had a great night having so much fun i do i am pregnant i get stopped i have to get out of the car i have to do the whole rigmarole where are you going where do you live but why are you over here? Because my house is down here. Okay. I was walking in my old neighborhood. I was going for a run. I got stopped in my own neighborhood running in head to toe under armor. Very obviously doing what I said I was doing. <laughs> but my oh, people in my own neighborhood in Columbus, Georgia, in this like upper crust neighborhood that I lived in could show them my house, which I had to because they did not believe me. And I got treated like a liar for saying I'm out for a run in my neighborhood, showing them my Couch to 5K app. The burden of proof that you have to go through just to not have them see you as a threat, not to exist as a threat, not to be afraid in a large group like a convention where people are looking at you and you can't hide even in this sea of people because there aren't a lot, a lot of people that look like you. And the people that do want to stop and just it's a lot i just want to quickly because i've only been to two conventions um and one i was only there for a day because life um but at c2e2 which was great it was a really good time really enjoyed it um i'll never forget when i was cosplaying as my casual caduceus um, which for mm -hmm. me was, you know, really nice flowing kimono cardigan and some other stuff. I had a shirt that literally said T-shirt because we know he loves tea. It was fun. It's cute. But I wasn't putting in a wig to do his long hair. I just didn't. It just no. So I ended up putting dye and paint into my own hair to make it pink and do all that stuff. But it was still an afro for the most part. I had a hat on, but sometimes I took it off. Um, at one of these points. Oh, Lord. Um, I will never forget a critter came to me and instead of being like, oh my God, this is cool. Oh my God. Hey, oh my God. It's nice to see you. It was, oh my God, your hair and put their hand in my hair. Keep in mind, I am resourceful. I did not feel like dyeing my hair. Do you see this? I'm not dying nothing right now. So I had spray paint, you know, spray hairspray. And straight up makeup in my hair to make it look right. I'm a makeup artist. It looks fine. Yeah, they regretted that because their hand was all uh, pink and white and gray. But the fact is, they decided to touch my hair and get all up in my personal space. And the thing is, I saw other people. No one else really got approached like that. You wouldn't touch some white cosplayer and figure mm -hmm. out what they're doing. You might get close to them. And I know there's an entire other thing of women cosplaying and people getting too comfortable. Cut that shit out. But I will never forget someone having the ability to just say, I don't care about you as a person. You are an object, especially as a black person. Let me get all up in that to see how you did that. And it's just... Not an accessory. Don't touch it. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts too, but I want to make sure that Honey and uh, Gabe get a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. That's it, Gabe. is just like, I'm tired. <laughs> I, I am. Like I, I've, I've been trying to be like nice and happy, but I'm tired of being nice mm. and happy all the time. And I realized that I was talking, CB knows it. Um, I was talking on D&D Beyond yesterday about how people are genuinely ignorant. And when I'm saying ignorant, please understand I'm using the little definition. I'm not saying, oh, they're ignorant, like they're rude. No, I'm saying they're ignorant. They actually don't understand. I had to teach two years ago, a 19 year old white girl about slavery because she was homeschooled and her parents never did. Mm -hmm. She asked me what kind of black I was. I said, I didn't know. She said, where were your ancestors from in Africa? I said, I don't know. She asked me why. I said, slavery. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Why? And I'm, I had to spend the next 10 minutes telling a 19 year old girl why sl- like, about slavery. And then she was like, wow. And then I was like, question, do your parents know you have a black friend? No, why? And then I just stopped hanging out with that person. This was two years ago. <laughs> So yeah. I, some people, some people get it. Some people have, some people that don't look like me have been in my corner and I appreciate it. And those ones, they don't, they don't, they know that if I need something or I'm not good, I can come to them. They don't have to check on me, but some people literally are just so ignorant. And if you have to take, if you take the time to come out of your ignorance bubble, you'll learn something. Cause I'm willing mm-hmm. to bet there are plenty of things that the black people around you don't talk to you about because they don't feel comfortable. They don't feel like you'll hear them. They feel like you'll, no, they feel like you'll hear what they're saying and then try to give them your opinion about it. But if I talk to you about how terrifying it was being a black man thinking that I was gonna get pulled over and maybe shot by a police officer, I don't want you to tell me, well, what you can do is no, shut up. That's not gonna help me. If I think I'm gonna die, you telling me, a better way to avoid dying isn't going to make me feel like, oh, you know what? You're right. I should have just, I should have put my hands on the steering wheel. I should have been born white. It'd have been fine. No, it's too late. I'm, I am who I am. I'm proud of who I am. But if you want to help, don't, I don't need your opinion every time. I don't need your input. If you want to do something for me, be there when I need you. Yep. Oh, really quickly. Mm -hmm. Honey, honey. You're my, you know this, you are my little big sister. <laughs> Fun fact, Honey is older than me, but I am way taller than anyone in this panel right now. <laughs> so Honey is my little big sister. So I need to make sure that she uh, gets in there. <laughs> nah, get a step stool. Mm. Gosh. Um, what I will say, because I know what I look like, I look far younger than I actually am. Um, I have been called chibi and doll-like from a very young age. Um, uh, it's funny people are talking about hair because I get questions and harassment and people touching me that are white and black. Okay. So I, I, I talk about, you teach people how to treat you and there's a certain level of, um, cultural acceptance that it's a compliment if I am interested in a certain aspect of your aesthetic. I tend to be able to duck really easily. (laughs) So I'm able to kind of matrix my way um, out of people touching my hair. And then I have friends who are close enough to me where if you wanna give me a scalp massage, I'm not telling you no, but that doesn't mean that Joe or Timmy or Alan or Susan, beside you, can also do that. You, I don't know you like that. So outside of being accused on numerous occasions of lying about my hair being real and natural from people of every ethnicity you can think of, the only time it really bothers me and when it's an accusation of me lying about something that is mine when you question my integrity in front of people to carry a specific narrative that is you using who i am and what i look like against my consent to push your particular argument whether it's to prove oh black people don't like their hair being touched see you're touching her hair. They don't like being in touch. When I heard someone try to explain to someone what a weave was and not know at all what they were talking about, when they got to the point of, no, they literally get it sewn into their scalp and that's why you can't touch their head. And I'm sitting there just blinking, this conversation going on above me because I'm short. Um, it, it's just this strange, this goes back to the people wanting to protect or defend you. Mm-hmm. And I want, to, I want to encourage everyone who is irate in the chat, thinking about 
people being touched against their consent or people touching their hair and so on. Ask your friend how they need you to defend them because sometimes you do more harm than good with the reaction because you're so shocked that you haven't checked in with your friend to see how they're doing. Yeah, and to kind of riff off that, I want to talk about, and, and Christina may laugh because we've had conversations about this where we talk about our experiences, like, you know, I've had the hair thing, people want to touch my hair, or they ask, is it real? Is it all yours? Yes, it's growing out of my head. You can see my scalp. It is all mine. I know they make fake dreadlocks. I'm not about that life. I didn't suffer for 11 years for all this to be fake. So a lot of times we talk about our experiences. A lot of people treat our suffering as an academic exercise. Um, and they look at us as if we're something to be studied or racism isn't real unless somebody's in a hood and burning a cross and from a lawn. They're just thinking of it, surely it's not that bad because they've never had to deal with it. And I was talking about when you're right, just talking about wanting to write about white fragility, not even actually doing it. Just, I was like, I should write about it. And because we all have had it, the black folks watching this, the brown folks watching this have had the, either somebody slides in your DMs when you tweet about how white people have gotten on your last fucking nerve. Surely you don't mean me. Did I do anything? Are we okay? Are we still <laughs> friends? And I'm like, I wasn't thinking about you. <laughs> and and I had the response, I, I know you're going to jump in once I'm done. Um, and like I had someone, and it's a white person, an academic, someone that I know, actually know, not just Twitter know. It's like, oh my God, I would love to sign up for my class. And I was like, who said I was giving you free syllabus fodder? Now, granted, if I put it on the internet and I don't put it behind a paywall, anybody can use it. But you just said you want to take my pain and suffering in dealing with white, fragile motherfuckers. And yes, I know we're on the front page and I said it. People at Twitch can text me if they want. I don't care. Um, I'm sharing my pain and suffering and aggravation and you want to make an academic exercise out of that mm -hmm. and said this in front of God and everybody on Twitter in public. And you think it's perfectly okay. And then there's the, I want to learn from you. I learned so much from you. And it's like, my life is not a learning experience. We are not here to be your black folks 101. And you can go, well, I follow all these black people on Twitter. I know what's going on. I know about suffering. The fuck you do not. Let me tell you again, you know nothing was like to be black in this country because you follow 10, 20, 50, 100 people, black folks on Twitter. You absorb our words, you regurgitate them, and you play woke, and then want to get credit for where people have, um, you know, acted like this is news to them, but it's like, oh, I follow these black people. Let me regurgitate their words and get credit, and they get more exposure, more pay, more everything than any of us combined. And I know somebody wanted to speak on it too, because we all we all had to do a thing for this overlay. So now I don't know who's talking in our chat. So whoever it was, speak on it. <laughs> I want so we even said in the chat, but I want to say very clearly, it is not mine nor any other black person's responsibility to explain these things to you. Period. It is a privilege if someone does it, if someone wants to take that emotional time and very often Brandon tries. Brandon has patience more than most of us. But if it when I when I explained to that girl, I did it because she was literally ignorant and she was a genuinely kind and friendly person. So I was hoping to God she did not turn up to be a racist ass. <laughs> but it is not my responsibility to inform mm. these people or anyone like it. If I do it, it's because I want these people to I don't want them to cause another casualty because they learned some nonsense that they chose not to change. If I do it, it's because I want to do it. I'm trying to make the effort. It is never my or nor any other person of color or black person's responsibility to explain to you how this works because you can do the research, you have the internet and there is so much information. And if you take the time to read, you should be able to tell the truth from the lies. And if you can't tell the truth from the lies that you needed to you need to reevaluate what you are seeing with your eyes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm really quickly, Brandon. I guess to cut, cut in real quick because Gabe just said something that was on my spirit, and I am doing this for the black community. I am doing this so we can get our words out. But at the end of the day, we are taking three hours out of our time to educate you all for free. So mods, thank you for linking people's coffees and whatever. Like Brandon said last week, fuck you, pay us. This is some educational. This is a lot of for us to be getting out right now. This is a lot. We're all getting angry. We're all frustrated at the fact that this is stuff that y'all should be able to just Google and look up for yourselves. But for some reason, you need the black voice to get it through your thick skulls. So, yes, thank you. Thank you for uh, boosting that. Uh, Brandon, you can go now. I just needed to get that out there. So, I get a lot of people who like follow my DMs and they ask me a lot of questions and I'm sure some of you are in here and I don't really answer my DMs that much these days because I find myself having to repeat the same thing over and over again, sometimes to the same people in the same words repeatedly. Here's the thing. And, and this kind of goes back to what was said earlier. And, and I'm, I'm addressing this directly to the crowd because people are watching. It's not enough to think that you understand because the thing about systematic racism or system in itself is part of it knows that if you don't know the information, then you can't use it. So at the fundamental basis of all of this is knowledge that has been held from you on purpose. That's not a conspiracy. That's truth. It's on paper. Motherfuckers have said it. It's recorded, right? So every time you go into a situation with black people, if you are not black, you are at a disadvantage, period. There's nothing you can do about it. You're at a disadvantage because the system made it that way. The only way that you can get them back is to go out of your way to get that knowledge. That is why black people have been writing books about this since forever. You can just Google black books. <laughs> it doesn't have to be creative. Amazon will do it for you. Mm -hmm. But if you do not do the work, you cannot actually fight against the systematic racism because if you use the system, the system will lie to you on purpose. That is what it does. So by you thinking that you're being slick and skipping what you think is this information to go into black people, you're doing what all white people do. And considering we're 13% of it on average, that means what? 20 white people to every one white black, black person? If you want to pay me a teacher's salary, maybe I will take on a class of 20, but you're going to pay me each individual student because you are having to teach. And I think people do it because they think that, well, I get lied to and well, this stuff isn't true. So if I just ask this person who I've decided knows what they're talking about, everything will be okay. But you're just gonna get that black person's opinion because we are not a monolith. There are things that I feel about that the other people on this panel do not agree with. And that's okay because we all have separate opinions. But if you put all of your bundles into one black opinion, you will never be on the side of right. You won't even be close to it. You have to challenge where you come from and what's been put in your brain and, and accept the fact that, okay, maybe some stuff has been lied. That's how it is. Maybe you even fell for the lie, which is the big part. I think some people get uncomfortable because they go, well, but I like this thing that black people just said shitty. I don't want to be shitty. That's okay. It's you were, they do that on purpose. That's why if you think about how corporations, they make it seem like a family and Coca-Cola is here for you and X brand cares about Black Lives Matter. Do they? We know they don't. We talk about it all the time, but they know if they say the words, you'll feel a little bit better about drinking Coke and Pepsi and doing whatever, whatever, because hey, they said the words, they did the performance, but you have to go beyond and you can't rely on black people to do it. You have to do it for you. And if you really want to cookie, if you really want the ally, the people that I like the most, the white people in my life the most that I will actually like defend for, they didn't start off by being like, hey, Brandon, teach me. Some of them were like, hey, I, I feel like I'm missing something here. And I do my thing. I teach a little bit. I yell a little bit because I'm a whole person. But then they go off and do their own thing. They, they come back with the books they've read. They want to discuss the knowledge that they've learned, not just suck mine from my head. Like, people like that i'm like oh you want to talk because you actually read a book oh you, oh you sat down and, and read letters from birmingham jail you, oh, oh you actually want to talk about it from a source of knowledge and not just asking me questions so you can figure out how to deflect it that goes a long way and people won't do that and that's all i ever want that's why i don't answer some people that's why i'm mad at some people like the books are there like half the stuff that even we all know is like we all didn't grow up with black knowledge it was taught to us we've read books like we've gone on our own 
spiritual and, and mental journeys and people want to come to the table having not even done that? that like, you can't even pretend like that's fair. You can't even be mad that black people would, would be mad. But you can't be mad at anybody. You come to the table with less than nothing? Come now. Like, come now. So yeah, yeah like, everyone's around you is mad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I watch, like, you know, like, CB and Gate be positive, and I'm like, yeah, like, I don't, at least for me, I'm like, I don't know how y'all are positive. <laughs> I just keep it real 100% of the time. But, like, that stuff is needed, you know what I mean? And, like, I think that they'll gravitate to what they think is a positive voice, not realizing that they're trying to be positive. They're putting it out into the world because they're ugh, inside. And I'm the opposite. Like, I put mine on the outside because I'd rather punch people in the face so, like, Gabe and Christina can have a good day. That makes me feel good. Like, that's how I <laughs> complete myself. And, like, that's that's okay, but you don't have to be... Because sometimes I think people will see like me or like Tanya or whatnot, and I can see when someone's read a tweet from someone in the black circle and has been like, "Oh, I like this," and they repeat it, and I'm like, "Ooh, do you, you don't really know what you're saying? Like you're repeating something, and it, it, it's it, and then they're confused when it doesn't go well. It's like you gotta internalize it. You gotta figure out like who you are, what you want to do, what you want to bring to the fight. Like we need people who are gonna be like activists and go out to the streets, right? You know, like." We've seen that all this week. People who are like, okay, I've never heard of you before, but you came out with the fire, the protest. That's awesome. Then you get the people who are on Twitter who are trying to like bring positivity and energy and you know, like honey are trying to do good things. And like, we need all those people. But if you just keep coming at us with these questions, you drain us of our energy to help do that stuff. Like you can help recharge us by bringing knowledge to that. Like not, not that you have to give it to us, but just be like, hey, I understand what you're talking about because I went out and bought 10 books and read them all cover to cover. I didn't argue, I read it. Like, you know, like do the work. I don't mean a grandstand, but like, it drives me because people message me so often and I can tell that they're genuine, but it's like, you're fake in your genuineness because you haven't even done the work to even let me answer your question. I'm gonna have to explain eight things to even answer the one question you have, mm -hmm. you know? And like, it's tiring. People don't have time for it. Yeah, and you're gonna be confused on why like your favorite person is mad at you on Twitter. It's like, bro, like for you it was the first time you asked, but like that's the eighth time we got that same question in the same words because white people hang out together, you use the same language. So sometimes you think it's a unique question, you ask the same thing. I can copy and paste some of the questions that people have, and it's like, is this a bot? Nah, that's culture at work. Like, so that's it. That's my jam. Um, perfect, Brandon. Like what you said that we have to speak into eight different things. Um, I'm going to jump onto that point, but you know, I'd like to think of myself as a casual educator. I used to be a life coach. I tutored, you know, STEM stuff. And so like, I personally always want to come from, from any direction, whether it neutral, angry or happy or whatever, just to get the point across. But I also understand like, I, I'm trying to fight the good fight. Like, you know, that's what I was taught in the military is just to like, you know, just put in the effort. Right. And sometimes it's successful and sometimes it's not and it's tiring. But having to exactly so what Brandon says is like, I have to teach you eight different things before we could even get to the, the, the conversation and understand that I have to do it under my um, code talk or code switch of being white or whatever your version of white is. So that is actually actively happening when we're all explaining like, Oh, I don't get this issue. I don't get this issue. I don't get this issue. I have to literally grab my brain, throw it into your psyche, which is all sorts of weird. Please understand. And then I have to break it down, break you down, then break the subject down mm. and then break down like, you know, centuries since like basically the 1500s when the book on race was literally wrote, wrote written i have to break all that down in a maybe a 10 minute conversation that we're gonna have because that's the time that you set out for us because you didn't make this a plan in your day you weren't like hey let's have a coffee or something or i'm gonna do something awesome or whatever like i don't know help you move or whatever and i want to sit down with you for three hours and figure out like what is this you're just like i just want to have the good feelings of talking through this conversation but understand like i even try to make the most out of that 10 minutes of going through that weird mind space of just trying to mind melt me and you in the whole same space in the whole, like in this time, in this time and presence to kind of convey these messages that are important to me um, and how much effort that goes through and how much energy it takes just to get you to the next step.
it's not even like complete understanding this is just to get you to the next step and that's that's what i wanted to uh speak into uh well i wanted to talk about because i was thinking as everyone was talking is that before we even get to that part we gotta we gotta get people out of the mindset that if i said if i say to you you've done a racist thing that i'm calling you the worst cross burning shoot wearing racist that ever walked the earth or if i say black lives matter that I am not automatically going, your life doesn't matter at all. It's getting people, either non-black POC or white friends or white folks in general, with as much energy as you can muster to listen to that first and get past their own hubris and their own ego to think that if I say, I'm sick of white people, I can say that in my Discord, I can say it on Twitter, and I can guarantee you I'll have 50 angry messages when get off Twitter, you fucking racist. And it's like, I, did I say that I, I didn't say I want to go and do anything to white people? I'm just like, the white people that always want to be in my DMs, everything else, they have worn out what little goodwill I have. I am not a patient person. And to uh, touch on the thing that Brandon said is that, you know, people think, they think you are the nice, safe Negro. They think that you are the one that is going to, to educate them because, oh, you do diversity consulting, you do this problem is they don't get to see that side of me because code switching is a thing. Not that I'm fake, not that I'm not who I am, but I've had to learn how to navigate in a majority white world, especially because I worked in higher ed for 16 years. I have had professor, white professors throw tantrums on the floor of an office and then come back later and try to explain it away. And I'm just looking, I'm like, had I done that, police would have been mm -hmm. dragging me out of the out of the office. I would have been fired, lost my job, everything else before the sun set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before we talk about educating people and getting them to listen, or even just having that moment where you take that emotional labor and that time to talk to the quote unquote well-meaning white person, because as we know, since everybody wants to throw MLK out at us, he also said that the biggest danger is the white moderate. The people that are just not enough racist to listen to you, to tolerate having a black coworker, but don't bring a white, don't bring a black person on the date. Don't say you moving in a mostly black neighborhood, then there, then it comes out. So we got to work on getting people to get all over themselves before we can even have a serious conversation. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I have said something about either a person or, for example, then I'll I'll give it over to to Gabe or Honey if they want to talk. Is I sh I talked about how nobody ever got free by asking politely. That was the tweet and I knew Black Lives Matter. This person brought a whole diatribe about how I was a black racist and they've lost a friend and a supporter. And I was like, first off, you need a dictionary because that's not how the definition of racist. I don't have that kind of power in my pocket. And mm -hmm. second of all, who are you? You are not my friend. You are some person on the internet that because they follow me and give me like $2 a month on Patreon, acts like I'm property. That's where that came from. And and people came and gathered them up. I blocked them and went about my day, but it's like, when we get that kind of reaction, we can't even have these deeper conversations everyone's talking about. But yeah, I want to turn over Gabe and Honey because, you know, I will run my mouth. We'll be like an hour in. Christina, real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah, Christina. People will listen to you up until the point where they are comfortable. Their allyship extends to the point of which they get uncomfortable and when they get uncomfortable you're going to hear about it it will go let's let's look at some of the greatest hits perhaps if instead of this you said this i would have listened to you mm -hmm. fuck you which i've heard 14 <laughs> times this week on that list mm -hmm. why because i said i am not engaging this is my boundary i set boundary this boundary is here if you continue to push against this boundary because you need you need you need and you know what's going on you've seen all of this this isn't new but you're now paying attention and you know that i'm overwhelmed i have made that very clear along with educating to an extent and sharing it's not even educating i'm sharing if you learn something that's fucking great but to have people continue to push against you and poke you and pick you and prod you and then get mad at you because you're gonna need to listen to me. I am a white gay woman. 
I know discrimination. How dare you <laughs> do so okay. have the opportunity to have? Like, I don't walk into a room and then have to announce, I am black. Everyone fucking knows, and they let me know. They know on site. I don't have anything to camouflage. Not that I would want to, because look at me. But the thing is, when you walk into that room and everyone others you immediately and then get upset with you for calling them on it, for saying, hey, what you are doing is hurting me. You are hurting me. Your attempts to understand me by dismissing me, you don't want to understand me. And then you want to get mad at me. Well, you're not trying to understand me. No, I'm talking. I am speaking. Mm -hmm. You are listening. If I choose to engage with you, that is my choice because this is my energy. I am doing what I have to do to protect my boundary, my space, my peace of mind. <clears throat> this, all of this, think about when no one's paying attention, the times we've had to go through this, or we've had to walk onto sets, or we've had to walk into our offices and have people immediately start talking about, well, what did they do? What did this person do to deserve it? Well, you know, I'm trusting in the police. I'm trusting in this. I saw it on video, but you know, I want to wait till the truth comes out. What truth? The truth that's more convenient for you to believe? rather than listening to the voices of black people that have been telling you over and over and over and over and over and over and over that this is happening, but you can't because you feel guilty and your guilt overweighs your wanting to trust in me and to hear me and to take me at my word that this is happening to me. You are essentially telling me when you are dismissing and what about in my experience, I don't matter. My words don't matter. You don't trust me and I don't trust you. You have not made yourself a space where I can be safe where I can say that this is happening and then I'm sorry I have to get this part out fuck your toxic positivity I don't have the time for it if I am talking to you about an experience that could cost me my life an interaction that could cause me to lose my life people have lost their lives I'm speaking to you about these things I'm telling you I'm uncomfortable I'm telling you you push back you push back you push back you say well, you know what I try to do? Person who has never experienced this says, I try to think positively. I try to turn it off. I, you can't, like, you can't just put all of your energy into that. I know, I'm living it. I can't put all my energy into it. But you continuing to take me beyond the space that I have set to, like, save my energy, to save myself. Because you want to know more. You demand to know more. You are owed an answer. You feel as if you are owed this. You don't, you're not owed shit. We don't owe you anything. If anything, you are on back pay. Like you owe us to listen. That's all we're asking you to do is listen to hear. Listen to hear. Listen not to respond. Listen to us. Hear our experiences. See our pain, the things that we are going into. And for you to meet that with either a pushback of I don't believe you or focus on the positive smile. You know what I do when I'm having a bad day? Does your bad day include being dehumanized? Does it include people looking at you as if you are still the constitutional definition of a black person, which is three fifths of a person? Because that's how you're acting. Mm. When you act entitled and you wanna keep pushing back and pushing back and pushing back, and you don't give a fuck about me. You are not my friend. You are a rando on Twitter that came for me and I will sit you the fuck down because respect is important and I don't owe you that. I don't respect you. You have not earned my respect. You are in my space because probably along some point you either want to fuck with me or you respect me enough to sit and listen to my voice. But you earn mine. You earn mine because I am speaking from experience and you are coming at me sideways. It's not happening. Sorry, that's a lot. Stop telling me to smile because I'm going to do what I want to do and stop telling me how to respond to people who fuck with me. But that's another subject we're going to get into in a little bit. Honey? Oh, I, I was going to say, don't apologize, Christina. Hmm. Matt, so, um, most of us here, well, all of us here, actually, but a lot of black people in media wear many hats. And I know that I do a lot. 
I make cosplays. I design digital and tabletop games. I do sound design. I do audio editing. I do voice acting. And part of the reason I feel like I have to do it is because if I don't make sure that multiple people know who I am, they will never know who I am. I feel like I have to do everything so that I will be seen. It is that it is that mindset of my mother has told me very often and never with malintent, you're going to have to work harder than most of them. You might be good at this one thing, but they might be better. You have to be good at all of these different things so that people will want you for that one thing. I feel like I have to do all these skills and be damn good at it. And I know I'm damn good at a lot of the stuff I do, but it was it was not easy getting the motivation or will to do it. Cause I'm always seeing people that I feel like either have done way less or just have way more opportunity. And when I'm not seeing people that look like me doing the same thing, I always feel like I have to do more. Cause it's like, you know what? This person looks like me. They did this amazing thing. Still wasn't enough for them. This person has been doing this stuff for years. They look like me too. They're, they're 20 years older than I am. And still wasn't enough. The reason people like me, people like us, feel like we have to do so damn much is because if we don't, we don't get the time of day. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get the time of day, I can't pay my bills. And if I can't pay my bills, I can't survive. And I'm not even trying to be rich. I'm just trying to live. That's Truth. it. Well, like I was gonna say, like people say that to me all the time. They're like, "Oh man, swords fall!" Like you out here work so hard. You like you do blah blah blah, and it's like, well, like that's what I have to. You know, I, I cut my teeth like you know in Silicon Valley type places where, pff, black folks, who what? Like, that's not a thing. Like you know, you go walk into a programming office and it's, it's mostly white guys. You know, so I'm used to having to know that I have to do it like twice as ham i have to go hard all the time you know i have to be on time you know i got to be the last one to leave i gotta be the first one there i gotta figure out what skills i need today what skills i need tomorrow like so you just don't forget that training in a way you know you just take that to everything like in a funny way like we talk about black excellence but black excellence is just because we know we have to do three times as much to get where we want to go so like everybody's just on that all the time even when it's not healthy for you like that's a thing too you know <laughs> A lot of us don't know how to stop the grind because we just get used to it, you know, or afraid to stop it because you're afraid if you stop the grind, the wheels come off. No. Honey. Whew, that is a lot mm -hmm. to follow. Um, <laughs> I will start here when it comes to education. Some people watching this are DMs or story tellers or people who run games and there's a certain level of research that goes into um, at least when I'm creating a setting um, or if I'm preparing to play NPCs or characters that have a different life experience than my own um, it, it's part of the creation process for me to go educate myself and oftentimes I find after that the knowledge that I have learned gives me an insight that allows me to be more empathetic to people and their struggles. Um, there are stories that need to be told, but unless you actually go read those stories um, and, and realize they aren't being told, you won't know that they're there to be told. So mm -hmm. instead of looking at it as this daunting task of I have to go back and do a master's you know, degree on um, the history of Black people in the United <laughs> States, you know, um, you start with one book or one article, and then you go to the next book and the next article. What I would say is not every Black person has the same Black experience. And, and when I say that is, just because you saw someone wear a t-shirt that says it's a black thing you wouldn't understand coming to me to ask me what does that mean mm. i have no idea why that person is wearing a t-shirt that says it's a black thing you wouldn't understand i can tell you what my experience is and what it may mean but i don't represent 
every black person. Some people are angry. Some people are sad. Mm -hmm. Some people are scared. And everyone approaches the challenges that they see day to day in a different way. Um, I have gone to an interview with a resume, sat it in front of the person, and they look me over, look down, look back at me, and tell me, I don't believe that you have done these things that are on your resume, so I don't think we have anything to talk about. But what that does for someone like myself is say, okay, if it's that you don't believe I have these recent experiences, let me take this experience, know that this can happen, have it in my back pocket when I'm mentoring people of what to be prepared for. And then I took that and I went to go start my own business. When uh, I was medically disabled by a decision made by a doctor against my consent, instead of being so mad about that I couldn't focus on healing. I said, well, since I'm gonna be homebound um, and not get to have this college experience and get my fundamental years and so on with other people, I'm just gonna go get another degree. That's how I channel the challenges that I face is I can't afford to be angry because then I wouldn't be available to help or comfort the people that are. So just keep that in mind that not everyone has the same experience. Not everyone is going to engage in the same way. Look at what their brand is. Look at what they represent. And if you're a fan or a follower, instead of jumping to the defense, like I said before, ask them how they want to be defended. Um, because it's, that's my biggest fear is that someone will cross a line, someone will come for me in a way that is uncomfortable. And then in my defense or people who care, they're dogpiling on someone. But that's not my brand, personally, that's not how I deal. And that would break my heart more than the hateful comfort that's coming from someone. So just keep in mind that everyone has a different experience. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. Um, we have been talking about some real shit, but it's going to get realer. Um, I don't think that's a word, but I made it a word now. <laughs> Um, yeah, the realist. realist. Um, we are going to go on a quick 10 minute break to just let ourselves de-stress for a second, get ourselves ready for part two, act two of part two, which is going to be, yeah, you're not ready for it. Um, but really quickly, I want to say something because it's happened already and I need you to understand the type of person I am. Brandon mentioned something earlier and he said, Gabe and I are really nice on Twitter and I want to um, <clears throat> comment on that real quick. It's not that I'm nice. It's that I'm giving you a chance. Not a chance for you to F up, but I'm giving you a chance to actually try me. And what I mean by that is I can be the, the most genuine and loving person you know until you pass that point. And once you pass that point, you're cut off from me. I've cut off family members. I can do it easily on Twitter. I say all that to say, we are talking about some real shit in here, and if you can't handle that, and you say something ignorant, and you get banned, and then you decide to hit me up on Twitter, and tell me how that's a bad thing, don't do that. It's already happened twice now, and I am not above calling people out at all, <laughs> and it's not to call you out to get people to come for you, but it gets you to realize that I'm not the fucking one to try. So, thank you again for listening and being here. If you get banned, if you get soft blocked, if you get timed out, look at what you said and understand why. This is a time for you to listen. This is not a time for you to all lives matter. This is not a time for you to have a rebuttal for everything we say. This is not a time for you to question the things we say. And what I mean by question is I'm not saying genuinely being curious and wanting things to be expanded upon. That's valid, though it's not the time for it right now. That's valid. What I don't need to see 
is you not listening and not understanding and refusing to listen to what we just said. That's why you might get banned. That's why you might get timed out. Don't come to me on Twitter after it happens. I'm not the one. I've never been the one. I'll never be the one. Thank you. We're going to take a 10-minute break. I love you all. We'll be back very, very soon. Get some drinks. Hydrate. Posture check. All that stuff. I love you. Wardrobe change. Wardrobe change. Exactly. See you soon.
All right. Yes, it looks a hot mess. We know. But Gabe had to leave. Um, so we're going to fix this right now. Um, thank you to Gabe for being here. Oh, Lord. What's going on? Nope, 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 nope. Keep it like this. Yep, we're going to leave it just like this. <laughs> we knew it was going to happen, but it's okay. Look what you've done to us. Um, anywho. Um, let's talk about that racism. Let's, let's, all up. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, anywho, um, thank you all for being here. It does mean a lot. Um, <laughs> um, but we're going to get into some real shit. Um, and that's the abuse that we go through in this community as black people. So, uh, who wants to start off with that one? Because that's a real one. And what I mean by abuse is simply um, as follows. Um, Y'all try our motherfucking patience each time we exist. And we are done with it. So, who wants to start? I'll start. First and foremost, I wake up every morning to a lot of really nice things from people. Like really nice comments. People are generally pretty lovely. And then I go and I get a notification that says bitch or racist cunt or, you know, just the normal things. Oh, my eat a bullet, which I got last week. Uh, Kill yourself for being a race baiter. So... You can imagine, people are always like, oh, like, it's just words. These are just words. Mm -hmm. These are the same people that try to tell me these are just words and to ignore it, that when I try to tell them my experience, they don't let it hurt you. Don't let it hurt you, but then get hurt when I call them out for their behavior, even though those two are just words. I... People are always like, you don't have to like, don't engage. This person is a bot. This is a bot. Behind every bot is a person creating bots to troll out racism. And whether it is a bot or a human, it hurts the fucking same. It hurts the same. And I think the worst part, like as a black woman in the sphere that I am, I, I'm going to get the shit that I get. But the worst part of the abuse that I've received on Twitter and in this space was when I was pregnant. I have. We lost you. I had to. No, I stopped talking. Oh. I had to deal with a high risk pregnancy, being a, a public figure, and trying not to internalize so much stuff that came my way. And people say, you put yourself out there, you do this. I'm not going to give up my dream because some people are assholes. I'm not going to lessen myself because some people want to hurt me. But that does not mean that they do not hurt me. When I hit that quote tweet button, there's a reason. You need to see this. You cannot deny what's in your, well, yes, you can. You can deny what's in your face. But there it is. Like, here are these things in print. I'm not doing it to, like Honey talked about, I'm not calling for a pile on of these people. I am letting them know that their behavior is unacceptable. And this is what I will not tolerate in my space that I will curate. I will block you. I will make sure this space is what I need it to be. But first and foremost, like, you came to me. You called me this. You told me to go do this. I am not going to sit here and listen to you cry after that about how I've mistreated you and how dare I sick people on you because they dare to say, no, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say, free speech, but consequences are a bitch. Like, say what you're going to say. You get what you get. I don't control the people that follow me. I have no control over those people, over their actions. You have control over what you say to me. And I get to determine how I respond. And if my response is, this is what we're not going to do, let it ride. Because I give you a warning. I have a very distinct tell on the internet. I say no. And that is a complete fucking sentence. 
When I say no, period, exclamation point, anything, that is a complete sentence. I don't owe you an explanation after that. My no is sufficient. So if you decide to continue to attack me after I say no, you're going to get what you get because you cannot freely attack people. You cannot call me the N word. You cannot call me a bitch. You cannot call me anything and think it's acceptable. You will not call me out of the God-given name of Christina Ariel Glenn Tigner that I have. You don't have that right. You don't get to insult me and pick at me and try to destroy my fucking soul for doing something that I love. You don't have the right at all. And for people to come in here and be like, well, you know what? This is a bot. You really need to let this go. You know what? They're not gonna learn. They're not listening to you. They're not da 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 but that's gonna stop one person from trying me that I'm okay with it. Because you like some of the shit that you people feel comfortable saying to us out of your slippery little Twitter fingers mm. is so disrespectful. And then you have the nerve, the audacity to get your feelings hurt for being called on your shit. Mm -hmm. You don't get to do that. That is not how I was raised. I was raised, no, you speak to people with respect if you want to get respect. But if you come at me sideways, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Mm -hmm. like, I don't have the patience. I people, You're so patient. Oh my God, I wish I was strong like you. I'm not, I am not, and I should not have to be, I should not have to be strong to just follow a passion. My job, my career choice does not give you a right to harass me. People think because, oh, well, this is what you've chosen to do. I have the right to criticize it. I can write whatever I want on Twitter. I will continue to at you. But then, like, I see everything. I see everything. We see everything you are sending to us. Like, think about that. Somebody is on the other side. Someone is on the receiving end of this hate that you feel so comfortable doling out. It is painful. It is hurtful. It is a lot. The weight of it sits on my shoulders sometimes, especially right now in a time the Black community was, dis was disparately affected by COVID. How do I know? My dad fucking died. April 25th, that is not long ago. So since then, I then had to watch a black man, a big black man executed. Do you know the first thing that the doctor said to me after I looked for my dad in the hospitals? I had to call all the hospitals after the sheriff's department called me. They still like wouldn't tell me where he was. So the nurse, aptly named Bubba, I shit you the fuck not. The first thing out of his mouth is, yes, your dad is here. No, he hasn't been violent so far. I said, my dad, yes, he is big. He is six foot five. He is also retired military. He was also a police, like he was a cop. He's not a violent man. He's the sweetest man in the world. So this hurt me to see people say that George Floyd, like, oh, this was a big person. Obviously, this is how they respond because you see black as aggressive. Even in print, you see black as aggressive. Even on a stream, you see black as aggressive. If my character deviates a little bit from being nice and comes across as strong or any of these things, you tear it down. You tear it down because it's ter Why is this character intimidating? I fucking hate her. Like, you'll talk about how much you hate the fucking character and me. Like, this community is dealing with that. Then we are dealing with watching this execution live on television, on internet, all of these things. Then we are dealing with people dismissing the righteous anger that we have that is justified because they don't like the method, because no method of protest is proper. But then people decide to come on the internet. And the abuse that I've gotten in the last couple of weeks is rising. It is rising. As the numbers rise, the abuse rises. And the people who just call me out of my name, call me this, for being honest, for being vulnerable, for being truthful, for being Christina. I am not a crime. I don't owe you anything. I don't have to lessen myself to make you more comfortable. 
And just because I say something does not give you the right to fucking try to wound me with your words. I want to quickly um, comment on that. Um, I will never forget. Keep in mind, I've only been in this community since April of last year. Um, and yeah, my reach has grown. And I'm always appreciative of that. But people got comfortable. People began to believe because of the way I present myself online, which is pretty nice, which is pretty caring and gentle. I am that. I am all those things. But people got to a point where they thought they can say whatever they wanted, which they do with anybody who gets some form of status. They believe the things that they type don't have weight just because you clicked a button to do it. Just because you didn't actually verbalize, just because you typed it out, it's not the same, right? No, I will never forget when the concept of, or the topic of drow was brought up online. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a bit ago. Um, it was before the work thing happened. Um, and I'll never forget, because here's the blunt truth. Yes, we know that drow aren't inherently, well, I don't care about all the canon right now. The fact that we look at high elves as the pale ones and we see drow as the dark black ones. That is a concept based in racism. And if you don't like that, you can get fucked. But I mentioned that I will never forget how blown up my DMS were saying I'm wrong. How dare you tell me that this race that I have loved so much is bad. You can fuck off. You can kill yourself. I don't think you deserve all the followers you have because you made a simple comment that racism exists in a fantasy world. I was going to work at that point. I was working as a damn cashier at a botanical garden wearing a green ass shirt that I didn't want to wear walking at five o'clock in the morning down from the fucking bus stop to go to work while my Twitter DM is getting blown up telling me that I'm an asshole, that I don't deserve all the things I've gotten, that I'm a fake, that I'm using critical role to get um to get status. I became the critical leech at that point because I made a comment that Jarrell and the idea that dark is evil is racist. That's all I did. But y'all went far. Y'all went way, way beyond what was necessary, and none of it was necessary, mind you. But you went way past all that just because I was a black man speaking up about a racist kind of a racist notion that is stuck into a game that we happen to love. That's the shit that we get. Because if a white person said that, it wouldn't go that far. It wouldn't have to go that far. Ever. And I am a very strong person. I have been through some shit. Sorry for the trigger warning in advance, but I was born with heroin and PCP in my system. My mother is a current drug addict. I was in foster care for four-fifths of my life. I've been through the mud quite literally. I am a strong person because of that. Words mean nothing to me. Quite literally. I can cut off my family with ease and not cry about it. I don't cry in general. And if I do, you call me on a bad day. I say all of that to say, the words y'all say don't mean shit to me. But I understand that I am a person that can handle it. A lot of people, my skin color can't though. So cut that shit. Period. The shit that we get is so much just because we want to speak out and exist and have a fucking voice. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know yeah, what else to add. Go for it. Mm. No, I was just thinking about it because, you know, like, I also, I used, I'm going to phrase this, I used to be a game journalist. And by used to, I mean, I love games. I grew up with games, grew up like, you know, first edition D&D &D in arcades. If anybody remembers arcades anymore. And I cannot divorce the black woman that I am, the bisexual woman that I am, from the things that I consume, the things that I do, the things that I produce. And a lot of times my writing about games would intersect with all of those. 
And one of the worst things I got, and yes, is video games. I know we're supposed to talk about RPGs, but this is what killed my interest in game journalism. I wrote about ARMS, that Nintendo game where everybody had like springy arms or some shit. But the one brown girl, her hair was a weapon. And like Christina was talking about earlier, people want to touch our hair. They don't think it's real. They want to weaponize it. Oh, they will go get a, a, a fake wig, go get some braids and think they're woke in a hot second. Or ask me, Did your, can you wash your hair? Some racist fucking troll came in my chat and was like, did your hair get moldy when you wash it? And I was like, and then that's when they also tried to spam the N word at me. But now keep in mind, I, I didn't say I hated the game. I didn't say go boycott Nintendo. I started with why is the one brown chick got to have hair as a weapon versus everybody else who's got arms or whatever. They're, they're whatever springy media shit. This one dude, he tried to DM me when I had my podcast. He used my contact form to invite me on his show to debate him. Tweeted at me, tweeted at me to my ha wasn't a real, like I'm a racist. And I'm like, you are spending all this energy to harass and stalk an actual real life black woman over the dignity of some fucking pics. People tried to Facebook message me. I got death threats over some fucking pixels. And that killed my love of writing about games. And I know I've talked about it rarely, but the part that got me and that, I know it's not the subject, but some of the worst shit I got was from other black people. How dare I not be happy about the crumb of representation this game was gonna say. Why, but we got a black chick. Okay, cool. You can go lap up them crumbs off the floor. That's not for me because we can do better. And, you know, combined that abuse, I mean, waking up to people trying to message me on Facebook, tell me how I should die, how they hope that like I fucking get killed or raped over again, some pixels and not seeing the irony of harassing an actual real life black woman over my opinion of some fucking pixels. And that's just the one thing. I have been at conventions. I have sat there and had people try to argue about drown with me. And, you know, I sat here, I didn't say it, but I was sitting here just like, I may have to get up and walk away for a hot second because the drow is, is so hot button for me that whenever someone does it, they try to joke about it and go, oh, this just, it's just the thing. It's fantasy. Except that fantasy is something you always want to do when we're at the table. You want to sit there and go, everybody who's dark is evil. And that is in their nature. And that's why I'm so glad Gabe wrote things about taking race out of class stats. And, you know, the abuse I've gotten, and it's not just in RPGs, it's there are days where somebody's tweeted me and called me all kind of fucking racist, bitch, everything else. Because I just said, I don't like this character. I don't like this racist portrayal of someone like me. Um, like when I played uh, Mafia 3 and streamed it, you play a black man and he's really more mixed, but he's about my complexion, maybe actually a little darker. I got some of the worst racism on Twitch when I streamed that game. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, why I gotta be a black dude? You ain't gotta do shit. I'm playing the game. Nobody brought you here. And that's the part where I think people don't seem to understand. They, like, you came to my DMs if you have that privilege, because my DMs are not open. They will never be open. I don't care what job I do till the day I die. Those DMs are never going to be open because of shit like that. People will try to reach me. They'll use Instagram, any method they want, because they just feel like they've got to be heard. And actually, I, I should tweet it, but I also don't want to be that person. But somebody Instagram messaged me like last week during the charity stream ask you to explain why people like Killer Mike and rappers can say the N-word, but they can't. And it, oh. I love that you both had the same reaction. That you both literally reacted. Because it's visceral as fuck. Because it's not the... Uh -huh. uh -huh. Y'all want to say it so bad. You can't. You want to say it so bad. What's why? why? you need to say it so bad? What, what is it about that word that gives you, you a dirty. fucking orgasm? I need to know. Because they haven't gotten their ass whooped enough, that's why. Because no, I'm telling you right now. If you say it, 
if you were to walk into my neighborhood and say it as reckless as people say that shit in my DMs, your eyes would be black. Like, the fuck is wrong with you? I'm telling you right now, I do not condone violence. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, Twitch. But if you ever say it in front of me, expect to be on the ground. We don't play that game. Period. No, no, it, it's on site because here's the thing. I survived all this other shit for some I think that they can just walk up or say it because here's the thing. We all know this. Everybody watching the chat knows this. All the shit people say to you in your DMs, sideways, they come at us on Twitter, in our streams, in content we do. Because like a panel I did two years ago at PAX Unplugged about race in games, some rando fucking found that and wrote a paragraph about how I'm an SJW and a failure. And I was like, <laughs> how much time do you have? This panel's two years old and this video, I ain't thought about it in literally two years. But this is the kind of stuff where people go out of their way. It's not just, oh, somebody's gonna find the video of this panel and spew some racist shit. We know that. We know it's been in the chat, it's been in our Twitter. It's it's the mere act of existing as black and people don't connect the very things they do with the emotional toll it takes on us. So when we get tired of your shit and go, I'm done. I got time for you today. And quote tweet you or reply to you and pull you entirely off the cliff ledge. Why are you so mean? I was just trying to learn. I didn't mean it. It's just words. You said that shit to me. And I'm an actual person. I'm not going to spare your feelings. You want to come sideways, you come correct. You better not miss. Because none of us are nice. None of us are going to take your shit. Because again, that 450 turns of monopoly where we ain't had shit is coming due. Um, I I want to speak into something that uh, Gabe mentioned earlier, and in some ways I don't feel as far as like in the TTRPG scene as visible as some of the rest of the folks here. Um, but and that's not to I'm not like I'm not throwing shade or anything, but it's more of something that I've had to process over the past two weeks and week with all this uprising and stuff that I've had, and this is going back to the subject you brought up, Critical Bard or Omega, that I've processed in my head and has been so toxic in my own brain that I've, I couldn't even speak about because I was afraid that like, everyone's gonna hate me or et cetera, et cetera, even people who I, I, I appreciate or who look like me, but through uh, me being in this community and, and doing stuff performatively for dun like doing Dungeon and Dragon content in the past year and a half, I think, um i've looked at other places where like i've wanted opportunities or i saw like how do i get there and i see someone who looks like me or a black person in that spot and i'm like oh spots taken look somewhere else and i've i've and that's crazy it's crazy to think and it's not that oh i hate this person like most of the time it's someone who i look up to but i'm like spots done wrap it up try harder some do something else and look at some other opportunity because i think in my own head that once a company or a show or whatever it may be has a black person that my spot is gone and that's insane like and, and it, it's it's so crazy like it hurts that much sometimes when i'm just like man I, I tried really hard to do this or that this other day and i see that's gone and i i appreciate that person being there but i maybe I don't deserve it. And then it goes internal. Maybe I messed up or maybe I'm not doing enough. And, and Gabe spoke into seeing someone having to be so excellent to be at a spot. I'm like, what am I not doing what they're doing or whatever the case may be. But it's kind of crazy to kind of think that how much I go internal as far as like, and I'm buy into the tokenism thing that like, oh, they got their spot. My spot is now gone because it's, it's something that I've analyzed like, Oh, most shows or what's whatever, like once they have that person, they usually don't have a spot for another one and, and that's it. And so like having to process that in the past week and a half has been insane. And I've only got to the point where I can speak about it now. And I still might be off base, but I had to bring it up because like it's been affecting me emotionally um, or at least internally and having to process that on top of everything else that I've, I've been going on. And I don't have any active things that have happened to me in the TTRPG scene in the past week, but this is more speaking into something that I've analyzed for the past year and a half um, and how that has affected me in this scene. Valid. Uh, and really quickly, mm -hmm. I want to, um, because I said it and I just want to harp on it real quick. Y'all know how much I love Critical Role. 
It has been a part of my experience in this community from the jump. I literally did a random cover of Handbook or Helper. That's how I got my start in this community. I love Critical Role. I love Matt, Sam, Liam, Ashley, everyone. But when people insinuate that the only reason I am successful is because of Critical Role, mm-hmm. I need you to understand how insulting that is. Mm-hmm. I, am an act, I am a member of Actors Equity Association. I have been a professional actor for almost a decade now. I've been singing since I was a little shit in the fucking children's choir of Progressive Missionary Baptist Church in St. Louis, Missouri. I have been doing this literally since I was born. Music is in my family's blood. This is not to disrespect Critical Role, and they know this. I don't need to apologize to them. But I'll be damned if someone even attempts to give my success to someone else. And if you'd attempt to demean me and claim that I'm only successful because of someone else. You have me entirely fucked all the way up. I have worked from the ground. I, as we know him, Drake said, started from the motherfucking bottom. Now I'm here. Cut that. And not just for me, for anyone on this panel, for any black person in this community, they have worked so hard to get to the point they are. Don't you dare disrespect them and say they're only there because of something else or because they're or because they're black. Bitch, you have me so fucked up. Like, my blackness isn't the reason I'm a fucking success. If anything, my blackness almost prevented me from being a success. So don't try that shit. We have worked so damn hard. That's why it pisses me off, and I know Tanya's going to have something to say about it. But it pisses me so off when they claim that rivals only exist and is successful because they're only people of color. And they're the Mm -hmm. only visible one you see online. Mm -hmm. In in a higher Mm -hmm. standpoint. They have worked their asses off individually. And as a group, they are so much more. It is not because they're black. It is not because they have dark skin. Don't fucking do it. I'm going to drink my motherfucking wine now. Yes. I got plenty to say, but I'm going to let other folks talk first. <clears throat> um, Brandon? Oh, yeah. uh, it's weird for me to talk about like abuse in the space, mainly because I feel like I don't take it the same and so like i guess for me like i'm like in a weird way like that stereotypical black guy because i've been through a lot of the experiences that people see in lifetime movies um like i was born in chicago but i spent most of like my junior high high school in like that midwest in the south so when it comes to having friends who were cool at school and you go hang out at their house and you walk in and you see a big Confederate flag, oh yeah, I've been there. Friends that you could only hang out with outside that they couldn't you know, tell their friends about because they couldn't have the black friend, yeah, been there. Been hanging out at a girl's house because she said it was cool, the door opens, dad's there, she tells you to get the fuck out, you've had to run out, mm-hmm, been there. Chased by the clan, oh yeah been there like i've had those experiences i've had to deal with those things that test you and i had to deal with all that before i was 18 you know like trigger warning but i'm gonna be real for a second like the first time i was ever sexually assaulted was by the cops that was my life so like when i see shootings it's not just black i very much see me because i've been there I know how to stand and walk when the cops are around because I had to learn that because I literally have been there. I have literally been pulled over in the middle of the night by two cop cars and had to stand there and watch them pull out the CDs out of my fucking CD holder. I've been there. So like people will sit there and either say one thing about me, one thing, another. And it's like, you don't know, like I've been tested. So I'm here because I rolled a crit every fucking time. It's, it's almost luck. And 
I don't say it a lot out loud because I know it gets on people, but I say it offline when people are like, oh, you're so strong. And it pisses me off. And I go, yeah, because the weak ones are dead. That's kind of what it means to be black. All of us are excellent because we have to. We don't have a choice. And sometimes we just want to be soft, but we know that that's how they catch us slipping and that goes through our heads. So we are what we are, you know? And I'm not even mad about it anymore. That's just life. And I've been lucky enough to meet great people and I've been lucky enough to live through it, survive it, and to meet someone that I love with all my soul. And so for me, I'm very much at peace. So when people see what I say online, if they think it's anger, it's anger because I don't want someone else to have to go through that. I don't want some other little black kid like me who's just a little bit weaker, who can't take it. You know what I mean? Like, I do that for that. I'll take the hit because I'm good. I leave my DMs open because there is nothing you can say to me that I have not said, had had said to my face. There is not a thing. And I dare you. I have had people and it's been at circumstances where I couldn't fist up. I've had to be at work and had people above me say crazy shit to me with full intentions and knowing what they say. And all I could do is sit there and take it. Couldn't even emote. You know what I mean? So I've had to live that life. So think whatever about me on Twitter. I'm there because I'm the definition of I've had enough. And if it's around my zone that I can see, best believe I will catch it. Because I do it to myself because I have to, right? Because I know what it means to have hate divide people. So... I'm always trying to challenge myself to be better because I do have to recognize that I'm also a 90s kid. So pff, we were taught to say stuff we didn't even know was homophobic. We just thought it was a word. So like decoding, I get that. That's part of my existence. But I'm not about to sit there and let people throw the kind of hate that made me hate myself for years. Just hashtag will not. Just will not, period. And for anybody else who needs a shelter, I'm down for that. And that's how I feel about my role, and that's how I bring my force to TTRPG. Like, I'm kind of stunned. I'm as big as I am because I've never really held back. I expected to be at, like, sub-thousand followers for, like, ever, and I was cool with that, right? But it's just, like, sometimes everybody can't stand it for themselves, and it's not about weakness. It's just a hard thing to do. But, like, psh, baby, I'm tempered in fire, you know? So let's go. Like, I'm all about it, like, all the time. Like... And so for me, I'm looking to grow as a person because I look at the people who were hateful to me. And if I think I'm even a little bit like what they're doing, mm -hmm. I'm in the wrong spot. I'm in the wrong place. I don't want to be there. Right. So <clears throat> abuse is something that people can do and they can do at home in their own privacy. Right. I don't care if it's Twitter. You put it on the Internet. I don't care if you follow me. If it falls up in my in my feed and it's racist. Phew, yeah. Yeah. Oh, your followers, you're putting your followers on me. Well, that's the kind of statement that makes people kill themselves. So you can go ahead and delete that tweet if you don't like the heat. If not, you put it on the internet, son. So what's up? Like, we all have to live there. And, like, Black people have to deal with the fact that, like, it's triply so. Say something kind of off kilter and be Black on the internet. Like, you'll get extra force, you know what I mean? So, like, I'm just about, in a weird way, like, making those things that people say that are racist. I know that you can't make people not say it or not think it. But I can make you think twice about the consequences because there should be. <laughs> you know what you're saying is hateful. Most people know it deep down because you can tell because they adjust what they say when they're around people that they think won't like it that they need in their life. You know what I mean? So they know what they're saying is wrong. They know what they're saying is hateful. So I don't feel bad. Like, I don't feel bad. Like, follow up in my mentions with some crap. You will get hate. You will get flames. Follow my DMs. I will publish your DM. Like, I always do. Like, it's it's over. It's It's done. Like... There's a billion other things that we could be mad about. Like, let's go back to arguing about pineapples on pizza. I'd much rather talk about that than be homophobic or transphobic or racist. Like, we got all sorts of stuff to work out. Like, why are we still at base one? So, like, for me, I'm just I'm just 100 percent not about it. Like, so you can't do anything to me because I've just been there. Like that real life stuff. And not to say that Twitter's less. I'm just saying that when you've literally had to look up. At a truck, a five good old boys say whatever you want on Twitter, my dude. I guarantee you, you will fold first because you don't know what that's like. And that's just how it's going to be. And that's how I think it needs to be because I can't be super warm and fuzzy. I can be my own kind, but I can definitely keep 
the terrible shitty people for showing up to throw slant like stuff at the people that I care about. So mm-hmm. block your defender, whatever. I don't really care. For me, it's just you know better. People know better. And so like sometimes you gotta be that person to punch a Nazi in the face. I'm that person. Just you know, throw into my GoFundMe for my bail. That's all I ask. <laughs> you know? And like so I'm good every day. So like when people people don't need to message me to ask me if I'm okay, like I'm good. Are you okay? You know what I mean? Like, are y'all doing okay? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if we get together, we can do crazy, amazing things. And and the biggest thing I've seen is like the stuff that certain entities do to keep us from just realizing that, hey, like, we have common shit together. We have common shit that divides us, but none of it has to be what it has to be. That shit's amped up. So no, like, you know not to say the N-word. You know? Go ahead, say it. I'm articulate enough to make you feel bad without having to cuss. And you will realize what it's like to have to be put in a situation. Because I've had to sit there in an office and figure out how to basically respond to an email and not completely capitulate. You know what I mean? You've had to learn how to be like strong, but in a way that they won't infer as being mad because that's what it's like to be black, right? So it's like, most people don't have enough tools in their box to come at me, so. Oh, and you know, and the thing is, you don't be nice or like deal with them without cussing. I'm gonna cuss the motherfucker out the minute I want to. Because here's the thing, everybody wants to act like cussing is unintelligent, what have you. I can cuss you in several languages. I can cuss you using a $10 word that I picked up in college. You may not even know what I've said to you. But I wanted to talk about what Omega said in terms of rivals. And then I really, really wanna make sure that Honey and Michael get a chance to chat before we wrap. Cause I know we, some of us are, are very chatty and we will talk forever including myself but once i get on a roll i get on a roll um a lot of the conversations and press around rivals of waterdeep always turns to diversity i was lucky enough to be the 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 person on the press junket for the show last year being me live every time i sat at a table and i was paired with jeremy oh god what's jeremy's last name jeremy and dnb i just blanked on his last name perfect Thank you. Okay. I just thank you. I just like just brain. Um, I was paired with Jeremy, and everything we got asked, every table we sat at, every video we did was, he had the queer angle, I had the black and brown angle, and and it's like I'm here because we're an official show. We're all going to be here because this is a show that Wizards brought together at, at that point last year. Yet all the press, all the comments revolve around, I need a show that's brown people. I can't, again, come back to that. I can't find black people. We're not hiding under a fucking rock, go outside. And the thing that irks me, and I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it publicly, it irks me to no end when people tweet, I want critical role, but black. And I love Matt, he's <laughs> a dear friend. <laughs> What? No, okay? just no, no, because oh, I, I, I would have a mansion if I've heard. If, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, but we, oh, the I dream have, cast of their separate but equal critical role kill me. Look, and they're always like, I want critical role, but black, and it's like, a, we're not the only all POC show out there. For a while, we were the only all black show until Masood joined us. But. We don't come and watch our show because you want to see the brown people roll dice and go, look, I support diversity. There's Tales from the Mist. TK Johnson is the DM. Mm-hmm. Orion work works worked at Watsy, put out Mythos, the current module that's out. You know, there are more of us than just I want critical role but brown faces. Okay, cool. But are you going to come for our storytelling? The fact we rotate our DMs all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's Dicey Dungeons. There's all these other people that never get a mention. And, you know, it's cool that people know we exist. But give the shine to everybody else who's been doing the thing. Just because they're not on the D&D Twitch channel or they're not on Geek and Sundry or any other big channel, they're out here doing the damn thing, too. That's why when all this has been kicking off, I'm like, who are the people that are not getting put on these lists? That aren't being collected because no one can find black people. And, you know, say, say black. It will not kill you to say black, not POC. Mm-hmm. And it just irks me. Like, Chris, poor Christina has got some text messages from me where I'm like, can, do you have spoons? Can I vent? 
are you, do you have time for this? <laughs> and it's, it's, or I am. that's because I'm awake and you should have gone to bed. Because <laughs> you're on the way. Yeah, I told on you. I don't sleep. Mm hmm. We're going to talk after the show, ma'am. But, you know, it, everything comes down to people, people talk about our show and like they always tag us and it's always like, it's like, and you know, I dare, there was a thread that was like a hard mode. I dare you not to say rivals, which I love to see, but it's like, we shouldn't have to be out here going, look at me, I'm here, I exist. I write RPGs. Like there was even a list this morning or yesterday where somebody made an, yet another, in case you can't do your own work, here's a handy list of black people in RPGs and only listed me as a consultant. I've got writing credits at every major house that does games. I am a developer, but it's like, oh no, I'm sorry. It's like, my name's in Paizo books. My name is now in a Watsi module. And my name is, I'm co-lead dev on a green writing project. And our show just turned two years old, but we're still at this fucking, oh, diversity. And it's like, watch us cause we're all amazing. Watch us cause we tell an engaging, great story. All of us on that show have been doing things before Rivals happened. We didn't just become known because of Rivals. Brandon has been on Twitch and a partner, I think, four years. Sharif runs his own STEM consulting business. You know, I'm my own boss. I've been my own boss for the last five years because lightning in a bottle moment led to people caring enough about diversity to actually make it so I can make that a living. But COVID and everything else, that shit could go away tomorrow. Who knows? Um, you know, Latia is a, is a, What's the word? I don't know if she's in the chat. What's she's a community name? manager for our D&D Adventures League. Thank you. I almost said something entirely wrong. You know, she's a singer. She does all sorts of stuff. She writes. Flow artist. You know, <laughs> right? So, you know, you know, me, Sharif, and Cicero were on a podcast for years before this even happened, before this was an option. I run my own organization about diversity and inclusion. We all do dope shit, but it took rivals people to realize we exist. I've been a Twitch partner going on three years and now I'm doing these numbers because people feel guilty or the black people Pokemon lottery has paid out today. Mm -hmm. So it's ridiculous that we got to deal with this. And then there'll always be somebody, oh, you're just, you're making money. You're benefiting off people's guilt. I have not told a single person to give me a gig because I'm black. Give me a gig. And let me prove that I can do it because of my ability and my talent. And the last thing, so Christina can hop back in, is talking about diversity and inclusion does not mean a lack of quality. Mm -hmm. All of us are fucking qualified. All of us can walk in any one of these publishing houses and write something, do something, or make our own. Mm -hmm. So when you want to talk about, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to dilute quality, eh, fuck that. We are all qualified. You just don't want to admit that we are good as or better than someone. And I just want to quickly add before Christina... I just want to point out, I'm looking at the chat because obviously I'm producing this. It's cracking me up in a good way and the worst kind of way that there are so many people who don't even know what Rivals is. And Rivals mm -hmm. is hosted on the official D&D &D Twitch. They are an official D&D &D partner. And yet y'all still don't know what the all POC group is. So it's like, mm -hmm. we do bad if we do good, and we do bad if we don't do anything at all. That's a problem. Go ahead, Christina. I think that goes back to the thing of you don't see us until mm. you need to, until it is convenient to see us. We're here. We've been here. Mm. We do the thing. But you don't call us until you need a person on your diversity panel until you need one person to walk into a room and be by themselves and isolated and alone and have their experiences written off and there's more of you than there are of us and it's utilized whether you realize it subconsciously or not that the way if we bring up something that affects us like what's going on in the news how it is shut down because it's uncomfortable. Well, let's talk about da 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 da. No, my feelings are hurt. Like I'm hurt mm -hmm. right now. Like hear me, see me, see my pain before now. Like you're seeing it now. You're 
seeing that rivals this show that has been on the main stage at B and D Live that has been on the D and D channel. You're all of us are here. Quitty, I love you, Abria, is a fantastic DM. Does not get the shine that she deserves oh. because she works her ass off. Who she develops mm-hmm. her ass off. Who she don't... tells a story like you would not believe, and it is not because she's a black DM. Is because she's a fucking good DM, and she's the fucking CMO of Dice Envy, a whole fucking dice company. I need you to realize that. Mm-hmm. Continue. Sorry, I had to go get that. Um, right. get those facts real quick. <laughs> I want to touch into something that we kind of brushed upon, but yes, some people see me talk on Twitter and they're like, "You're strong," and da da da. You use your anger, bruh, bruh. I'm not really allowed to be angry. I don't, I had to make the space to be angry. I had to make room and use the space that I have, which is my platform, to express my righteous anger because I had a space to be heard. Because otherwise, the number, people are surprised now when we're having these conversations and they're like, hey, you know what? This panel is so great. You guys have such concise thoughts. Everything is like, it feels like a lot of thought has been put into it. Well, fuck you think has been happening the whole time we've been experiencing racism we've had to craft our arguments and our conversations and have measured tones and the second your tone goes from anything that bore that looks like passion it's called anger i'm a passionate person i'm passionate in every fucking thing that i do do you see this back wall i could school you on doctor who i could school you on a whole bunch of things but i have to school you on race because that's the shit that keeps coming up I don't get the space to talk about my other hobbies. I don't get the space to tell you that I could tell you somebody's almost entire IMDb with my photographic memory and tell you all of the things that they've done, including minor credits, because that's how my brain works. But I don't get asked about that. I don't have the space for that either. We are not black spurts. We are black people who have our own individual experiences, who have our own lived things who have our own traumas who have our own joys and listen you love our anger you love our struggle you love it when you get to jump into a thing where someone's called us the n-word be that fucking anxious about our joy give us the space to feel joy black boy joy black girl magic all the shit give us that space support us the way like on our cosplay or our streams or our anything that we share the same way that you do when you say racism <laughs> holy shit let me jump <laughs> <laughs> so someone please make that a gif with the word racism <laughs> in it question mark i need it like, ars no. queef if you're still in here do that thank you that shit is a yes. fucking, like whistle just coming out the woodwork like you know in lion king when all the animals are coming out in the beginning and it's like the meerkats and shit and they're just like that's y'all that's y'all in our mentions but not when we're doing work not when we're doing good stuff not when we're being excited not when we're like look yeah this has been a great day crickets crickets oh my god somebody just called me the n-word what the like keep that same energy Keep the same energy consistently. Support us consistently. Don't support us when we are struggling. That is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to struggle. I don't want to have to speak out all the fucking time. I'm tired. I am bone weary and tired in my soul. Like weary is the only word for it. And I'm tired of it. I want to be joyful. I want to be myself. And yes, myself has all of these facets. My struggle is myself, my everything. All of those things come together to make me the person that I am today. But I don't want to have to keep being reminded of it because you feel the need to other me instead of being like, hey, look, look at this talented gamer on this on this day is here. Look at this person that earned their seat at this fucking table. You don't say good job. You say, look, a black person. Look at this black person at the table. Christina is a black, da, 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 and I am, and I'm a motherfucking problem. Mm-hmm. But you should not 
only support me because of that. You should support me because I am talented. You should support CB because he is talented. You should support Swordsfall because he is a fucking brilliant writer. You should support Michael because he is amazing and also really sweet. He gives really great hugs. You should support Tanya because she is amazing. You should support Honey because she is strong. She works in, do you know how strong you have to be to be these people and be black people in STEM? You can get in the door, but can you stay in the door? Because the Ooh. second you get inside of it, you have to deal with racism. You have to deal with the second your tone changes, you are the problem. You are suspended. You are written up. You are this. This person was super angry. I have had a boss come into my office. And if you've met me in real life, you know the smile is there. You know that I am engaging. I am fucking delightful. And I had them say, a man came in for a meeting. They said, he said that you did not smile at him and that you looked angry and you were giving off a very angry energy. Mm -hmm. You are like, you were really aggressive. You aggressively did not smile at this man. Make that shit make sense. Mm -hmm. This does not make me aggressive. Mm. I am allowed to feel my feelings. I am allowed to have my righteous indignation, my joy, my all of these things. I am allowed to exist as a full and complete person who does not have to lessen themselves to make you more comfortable. Stop trying to make us less than. Like, stop qualifying everything that we do. Stop trying to quantify it. You don't have to do that. Just let us do it. Just give us the space to do it. This space right here, CB put this space together. We created our own space. You want to say, where's your table? Here's our fucking table right here. And you are listening. We are inviting you to our table. Invite us to yours. Extend that invitation. And when we get there, treat us with the motherfucking respect. Michael, honey. Church. Honey, did you want to go? Yes. You hardly talk. Yes, yes. honey, honey talk. go. Yes. I've said something this this part. Yeah. And here's the, I just want to say about honey. Say honey is church. a very smart individual in the sense that when she speaks, you need to be fucking listening. So everybody, mm -hmm. stop talking in the chat right now and listen. Honey. <laughs> so we basically covered abuse and visibility and, you know, supporting people and so on. And as I was sitting here thinking about what to say. I'm going to share a statistic that is hard to hear. And if you are in the chat and you are watching and you need to go on mute because mentions of self-harm or suicide is triggering, please mute yourself right now. And when I hold up the heart, it means I finished. I'm going to give you a second for that. Okay. So when we talk about abuse, I educate parents on how to protect their children online. And that doesn't just mean firewalls and social media safety. It also includes a lot of cyberbullying. I've gone to elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and talked to them all about cyberbullying. I've talked to small white children who told me that they didn't like themselves because they were white. And because all the conversations that were going on made them believe that somehow that was inherently bad. I have talked to small children from every ethnicity about how everything that we do and say impacts them. And as the younger and younger and younger get exposed to what is online. To quote a statistic, and because we're talking about Black lives right now, I want to say I'm not invalidating all of the dangers that exist for children, period, because I educate all parents. But I'm going to say between 1991 to 2017, the rate of suicide attempts of black adolescents between the ages of about, I want to say seven or eight, all the way to about 14, increased by over 70%. A large chunk of that associated with bullying, including in person and online. There are also statistics connected to that where within their own ethnicity, it being normalized. So you have people that are growing up black 
targeting and hurting other people who are black because this cycle of aggression and negativity has been normalized. And like I said, hurt people hurt people. This is our next generation watching what we're saying and what we're doing and modeling that. And like CB said, he can handle a lot. Like Brandon said, he can handle a lot and so on because they've grown kind of like they're, they're diamonds now. That's how I put it. They're diamonds. They've been hardened by all this stuff. Babies are babies. So their ability to say, you're talking at me, but not to me, I'm going to brush it off, is not there. I'm going to hold this up for a second. When I interviewed um, Sharif from Rivals on my podcast, we talked about responsible language. We talked about how for the next generation, how we phrase things, how we put things, how we talk to one another is very important. Don't normalize the language of because you are a girl, because you are a boy, because you are black, because you are Latino, because you are Asian, insert stereotype here, especially when it comes to your education and what you can contribute to the community. Not only every single person has to take accountability for their actions. And every single person has to realize that that one comment, that one message that you sent to someone because you were angry, that that one, I had a policy on social media. If you mentioned, joke around with or anything that someone should kill themselves, I unfriended and blocked you immediately. I don't care what it was for. Because if you continue to hurt people, there's no healing. So when it comes to the abuse that you see, especially online, because there seems to be this sense of entitlement that because I have access to a keyboard, I have freedom to treat people however I would like. And it's sad and it's unfortunate and the consequences because it's not immediate to you, but these small children, younger and younger, who shouldn't even know what it means to end a life going there. But we're mad because someone that we love their cosplay said something that I reacted sensitively to. You know, they said that my ancestors may have owned slaves. I'm Creole. I know my ancestors owned slaves or I wouldn't be here. That's not a condemnation but it doesn't give you the right that your little child looking over your corner or who has access to your social media, seeing how you're talking to people and then going to their friends groups and talking to those people in that same way. And you have no idea until you've been called into an office. Those are the statistics and the information I have to see because of the nature of what I do. And that's why I always flinch when people mention positivity. There's a difference between being positive and there's a, and being passive. When you're dealing with business management or project management, there's talking points and then there's action items. We have to get beyond the talking points because everyone is given the talking points. This is what you talk about. This is what you discuss to show that you are a good person. <laughs> But like my mentor told me, if every single person that was alive at this moment chose another person to help, not just talk to, but to actually help them get to where they need to be. And then that person helped another person. And then that person helped another person. That's how change happens. It's not words. It's not hashtags. It's not retweets. That helps get information out there. But we have to get from talking points to action items because it is costing not just the lives we see in the media, but babies, people who cannot defend themselves. So when we bring up topics like this, that's where my brain goes. 
because I have been called surprisingly some of everything. I'm so nervous with every new follower because I'm hoping that the love that I have, the race-based love that I have for everyone. Love doesn't mean you have to like every single person. It's impossible for me to like over 3,000 people that I don't know. But I have a love for each person because they are a human being. And that is the bare minimum that I should have for someone is love and respect. Because we're geeks and this is a tabletop RPG, I'm gonna do two call outs here. There's a lot of black people that started watching Critical Role, not because they saw black people at the table. I can speak for myself. I am a wordy. I love to hear words. I love words. I love to write. And the worlds that worlds being created by Matt Mercer specifically included people who looked like me. And you can be as critical as you want of critical role to be, you know, play on words here. But each person does their best to take personal responsibility and accountability to how they are contributing to this community. And that's one of the things that made me okay with saying, well, maybe I can put myself out there. Because you lead by example. And what I told someone that everyone when I teach, a game master is a player at the table. You bring to that table your strengths and remain humble so that your players can bring their own strengths, realities, and identities to that table as well. You are the player at that table who agreed to turn the pages and move the bookmark. You're the banker who controls all the monopoly pieces not selected by the others and reads all the community chess and chance cards. You are the host of a gala of imagination and creativity and you're holding this tinkling glasses of dice. And you're immersed in like an ambiance of constant improvisation. And your only goal is to tell an amazing story with others and facilitate a unique level of human to human interaction. That is your responsibility as a game master, as a dungeon master, as a storyteller, as a person participating in this hobby. And I think if you take that to heart as a community, we can be so much better. You mind, if, can I yes. speak into? <clears throat> um, so kind of what Honey was speaking into uh, and is also the reason I got into Dungeon and Dragons uh, followed Felicia Day, watched Geek and Sundry, saw like their first episode live, and I was in the military, and I saw like I need this. This is something that I can tell my story and people who look like me story and people who don't look like me or have the same sexuality or gender. Like this is a tool that I think, seeing how Matt delivered things, that I can go forth, and in like i love educating i said that before i can educate folks on the other perspectives that's my goal when i play any game that i play whether pc or dungeon master so <clears throat> when i approach it that way i was in the barracks room with a whole bunch of marines i'm the navy corpsman there you know i'm their doc and in some ways i'm their moral compass because you know just look you, you could speak to a marine or corpsman about that but i got to have the opportunity of teaching Marines, people who wouldn't touch on things that are like black, LGBTQ, anything like that, because I play these characters and I made these characters important. I shared their perspective, their stories, their, their, how complicated they are as people. Like they're the same as them. There's, there's connecting issues. There's connecting themes. There's through lines between you and them. And it's not different. Um, and then, you know, and I want to also speak into how I had to go through these D&D books as a, a person of, or as black and, and and approach these modules. And some that I think source well for that I still have to go and, and look into his books, but something I had to actually actually go through is like, this language was heavily coded. There's an extra, extra approach I have to take on this to just read through the modules, interpret for my own so I can interpret to other people who might look like me because it's not easily digestible, right? It, and the same thing goes for STEM. Um, and so just realize that's another extra step that some black folks need to take in order to, to play these games. Um, 
the other thing I want to speak into is Chris, what Christina spoke into. And it's something that's deeply personal that I've kind of thought about in the past year. She spoke into being in a room, having to smile and have that tone. This happened to me in, even in the Navy where you think you're all aggressive and like you have to speak a certain way. And frankly, and like I did that and I spoke how they told me how to smoke because I code switched, but I had to go look like even more than that. And my voice that I have now, I don't even know if I like it all the way. It's I've 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 made my tone so like what's the word for it? High pitched. So like mm-hmm. what people perceive as feminine, so they don't feel assaulted when I just speak. And I've had times where I'm at work and I'm just like, hey sir, hey ma'am, how can I help you? Let me help you this way. And they're like, that guy was aggressive. He didn't help me. He didn't say, please, thank you, sir, ma'am. And I and I say all those things. I know I said them because it's been encoded in my brain already. So like having to speak like that and not even know if I like my voice anymore is insane. Like, because these things, I've had to process that. And because I'll lose opportunities, I'll get a a talking to from a a coworker, a customer, a manager, you know, even if it's in the dungeon and dragon scene of like, I don't like how that sounded like, because like I have to police myself so much. So like you're seeing my 30 years, now and and how i've had to navigate all this just to be who i am and to survive what what brandon was saying so like i'm still trying to figure out do i need to figure out what my voice is like what my voice actually sounds like because i know that in a lot of ways this has been trained into me that i can't speak with my deep with a deep natural voice that i think i'm supposed to have because i've just high pitched it all the time so this is my normal Cause I've had times where I've like spoken and really relaxed around folk who look like me and I've, I've had a different voice and it's insane. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there cause there's just so much intricacies and levels to this that having to tiptoe around so many elements of life, TTRPGs, games, uh, and having to be perfect all the time and effort. And I guess I'm just wrapping everyone's points all together is that it's fucking hard. Okay. It's scary hard. Cause the minute I slip, I think I'm going to lose all of this. Every, everything that I got is gone. Cause I slipped. I'm caught slipping. And that, and the sad thing is like, if that was to happen tomorrow, I know that I logically slipped and that's on me. That's my fault. How fucked up is that? Like I slipped. So now everything is gone and that's justified because that's the world we live in. And now I have to build up again. I, I, <laughs> this conversation is left with more process, but <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I got to say about that. It's just like all this opportunity coming up and more opportunities I want to get too like if i slip one day an honest slip not something that like i said something crazy or whatever like you just don't like my tonality or the style i delivered it and i just get put on blast and i'm done and and discard dis- discarded put to the side like i know that's a real thing and i'd have to be okay with that does brandon tanya or christina want to say any other words do um i would just say that hopefully in this three hours you actually learn something and are coming away from this either pitying us or acting surprised at how cool the world can be when you're not uh white or non-black poc and that you actually learn something not just be here and listen to us for three hours and go about you like i was at the round table i learned i'm good that's not how it works and if you've got opportunities or someone who can hire us, reach out, but realize in these next couple of weeks, we might be a little suspect because if you ask us to be on your like after school special, all black episode and never talk to us again, we're going to be like, okay, cool. Bring us to the table now and keep us there. Bring us opportunities. Don't have your one all black episode, your one all black one shot of whatever and then never talk to us again. Say it again. Hmm. All right. When you have your all after all black after school special, you won 
all black episode, your video you put out. We're here. We've been here. Reach out to me in a month. Reach out to me in six months. Reach out to everybody here, all the black folks in this audience that are watching us, all the black folks on Twitter that aren't getting tagged in these massive lists. Because let me tell you, my my mentions have been a shambles. I can barely use Twitter. So we're not a monolith. We're all here. And you know, if you try to run up and get done up and get clapped, you brought it on yourself. I will Only say as you're watching oh you wanna go no. no, no, go no. As you're watching everything that's going on and you get tempted to become complacent, keep going. When you say, Oh, this person got arrested, we've won. We haven't, because there's still trial. And we know how these things go after that point. Keep going. If you feel like this is this small, this conversation means that you understand and the conversation is over. Keep going. Do the work on your own. Educate yourself. Learn. And truly realize that this is a lifelong journey until it's done. Until all of this is a thing of the past until I don't have to worry about that same kid that you guys call cute on my Twitter every day and how he's going to have to move in this world. Keep that same energy when my baby is goes from cute to a threat, okay? None of these men on this panel should have to feel like a threat or change their voices or shrink themselves. We shouldn't have to be mindful of how you make people feel. Be mindful and stay vigilant. This is not over. It is not over. This is systemic. We have talked about TTRPGs. There is still health care. There is still reform in so many areas that we need just to live and live with a third of the gifts that you've been given. Help us build. Help us grow. And if we build by ourselves, don't tear our shit down. Mm -hmm. Let us help us build our own shit and keep and have something for ourselves. You don't always have to be mentioned. If one more person says I did X, Y, Z and expects me to come out of my grief to pat them on the back <clears throat> for the bare minimum, I'm just going to cry more than I already do. Be mindful of each other. Be kind. Work. Put in the work. Brandon. I'm going to keep it brief. And I'm going to remember it both my man, Omega Varian. If you think you're going to invite us into your companies for one time and we're going to leave, you are sadly mistaken. If you invite me into your company to do something, I'm never leaving. That's it. <laughs> Shout out to ASMR by Switchwell. Um And I'm going to just say what we've been saying for the past three hours is listen to us. Listen to us when we speak. Well, listen to us when we don't speak. Listen to our body language. Listen to how we react to things. Listen to the way we go about navigating this fucked up place called the TTRT RPG white community. Just try because as we've stated so many different ways within this last three hours it is very hard to exist as a black person in this community i know that speaking personally that i have a big platform now and i am thankful for it but it doesn't make it less harder at all i haven't made it i just got through round one we haven't got to the final round yet, and it hasn't been a flawless victory. So, I want to thank Tanya to pass, Christine Ariel, Gabe Hicks for being here when he could. I'm sad he had to leave, but that's life. Brandon Dixon, Michael Sinclair, Honey and Dice. Thank you, everyone, for giving your time and your effort to being here for these past three hours. 
to those in this chat right now. I don't care if you are mad when I say it. I do not care if you think uh, think of me as some leech. I don't give a shit. We just gave you three hours of our time. Fucking pay us. Our links are in there. We have Patreons. We have coffees. We have modules. We have things that we've created. And paying us isn't actually just finance. Support us. Follow us. Be in our presence. Lift us up when you can. And when you can should be always. Because you can gladly um, lift up someone else. Lift up us. I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank my mods for coming through. Mm -hmm. Because, who? Huh? I won't lie. It's been a little easier this time from what I saw. But regardless, they came through and they did that. But just thank you for listening. I don't have to thank you for listening. I want that to be very clear. I don't have to thank you for shit. But thank you for listening. It's been hard, and we're grateful that we had the ability to say what we needed to say when we needed to say it. Um, we are going to raid because I said so. Um, if you can be here, please do so. But we're going to raid someone that I think is freaking awesome. So that's where we're going. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. It's been hard. I'm tired. I know they tired. I'm almost done with this drink. I, this was up here when I started it. That's what's up. <laughs> um, yeah. Love you. As I say, I didn't say it last time, but I say it on my own channel. And it's my channel. We are the troublemakers for a reason. We make trouble everywhere we go as artists, as creators, Bards and artists throughout time have been the ones to shake up the system. So we're going to continue doing that. So, my troublemakers, keep making trouble wherever you go. Trust me, it means more than you might think. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Defund the police. Fuck yeah. Yes. Uh, we are good. Dude, <laughs> shit. Say I'm looking too. I'm gonna mute over here so I can hear it. Critical Thank you for that raid. Thank you for the follow. <gasps> Wait, oh, are you are you streaming right now? Wait, oh no, it's me. I'm being raided. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I heard you. You were like, critical part. Thank you for that read. I was like, are you getting raided? And I was like, no, it's oh me. My God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, hello. Oh, my goodness. Hello, everyone. Oh it's me, role players. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Um, this makes me so happy. Hi, everyone. Thank you so yeah. much for the read and the host and the love. Can you, can't I know, Tanya. I know. Okay. Listen. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just I'm just a smidgen slow, all right? It's okay. You know? It's just one of my faults. Oh. Did he just oh he just went bing bongy in front of me. I need to excuse me, sir. That's the bad yeah, guy. I'm gonna just that. hide from him real quick. Wait, hold on, will he come back over? Can I head on him? Oh, let's go. Oh, do it, do it. I got another Well then. All right, well, I'm just going to take this as an opportunity to um, say hello.